I want to see this. The metal tube? It's got a little weight to it. It does have a little weight. But boy, does it sound nice. For for me. <laughs> if I can sound okay. It's got a little weight to it. But You know what's cool about you it? You got to read? Yeah. I got to read. Are we going to bugle right now on the podcast? Yeah, should we? Do you, you want should. me to? Yeah, you should. You want me to rip one? Yeah. I'll rip one. Is that dented already? Oh, yeah. All right. How'd you dent it? Probably raking. Just beating. Yeah, <laughs> just beating brush, you know? All right. That is one thing that a metal bugle tube, it will dent. Yeah. yeah it might have been from, uh, like, putting it on my pack and, like, cinching down. Cinching. Tone you your audio tone your audio down in your ears, people. Here we go. Damn. You've been, not bad. You've been practicing. <laughs> What do you think? It's got that, that high tingy noise is different yeah, kinda, for sure. My, my note was kind of wonky right there. It was like drifting, but no, but what it like that high tingy part of the scream. <laughs> sounds it does sound better than pretty good, huh? Plastic, yeah. Yeah, I think it does sound better. And last year when I was hunting in Utah, those high notes definitely sound I better. I packed just the regular uh what was it, the unrivaled the little guy, I think. Yeah. It might have been the big one. I can't remember, but it was plastic tube. And then um, about midway through the hunt, I just decided I'm going to grab that metal eagle tube and just see what it sounds like. And I felt like it sounds better. To me, it sounds better. Yeah, I think I bet so it sounds better than the timber. And I actually bugled bulls in. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. It worked. Me, yeah. I did it. <laughs> yeah, I bugled bulls in. Yeah, I had one bull just come all the way across the canyon. Like, he was all by himself. He was piping off a few times. I gave some cow calls to him. He was like, yeah, I bugled, but he didn't really look interested. And I bugled at him and turned him. And he came all the way down the canyon. I didn't know where he was going to pop up. You'll see it in the film, but I didn't know where he was going to pop up. He ended up popping up lower. I thought he'd like side hill it across towards yeah. me, um, which I should have known. I should have known he'd pop up underneath me, but he, I, I should have closed the distance. But I ended up killing a better bull. But There we go. I did bugle one in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's nice pretty, job, Trail. Get yourself a metal bugle, too. Actually, I, I think I'm going to. The other cool thing about it is if you pop the, uh, the mouthpiece off, you can use the uh, the regular mouthpiece. So if you're someone that can't use a diaphragm, it's mm -hmm. got the reed built into it. Huh. So you can just straight blow into that reed. That's nice. Yeah, it's kind of nice. But I, I like it. And you can play wiffle ball with it. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely do that. Yeah. Remember when we did that back yeah, in the day? Yeah, we did the home run derby. <laughs> yeah, home run derby. <laughs> Did you, did you guys do home run derby? Yeah, it was yeah. a go on stress test video, yeah. I think, but we made it. Oh, and you home played run derby. you played home run derby with a yeah. I bet that one would have some pop to it. Oh, oh yeah. That's you might a, have to repeat that. What do they call it? A cork bat? That's a cork yeah, bat. Yeah, cork yeah, bat. Yeah. Do they still cork bats? I don't know. I would imagine so. I mean if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying, right? <laughs> yep. Well, we're back with a, a big hunt guys podcast. You can see we've got a bunch of gear laid out. We thought we would do a pack dump podcast. We talk a lot of gear. It's not a full pack dump, I guess. I do have my backpack over there, but I'm I can't really can't bring it up here. Oh, why's that? Yeah, my oh. office is oh. currently a full gear dump. Your office is, is impressive, full. Right, right? now. <laughs> it's like floor to ceiling. You, you could go hunting tomorrow. <laughs> You're so dialed. I mean, it's all in there. It's just not in my backpack. Yeah. So it's, it's just all laid, laid out. Everywhere. Yeah, it looks pretty great. Thanks, man. It's fun to go in there and just like look around, pick through your stuff. He has to have it organized though. He has like two big totes, yeah. like mm -hmm. pretty dialed. It's organized for what it is. It's organized just chaos. All, yeah, it's just all laid out. I like to see everything, you yeah. know? I like to, mm -hmm. and yeah. then you kind of like pick and choose. I don't if know. you walked in my house right now, my whole downstairs is literally gear getting ready for Alaska. Yeah, see? I want to look at it all. My clothes are in one spot, you know, my kill kit, yeah. rifle accessories, camera gear. So you're making fun of me, and that's your house, man. My whole house. Well, I'm a single guy. I can do that. <laughs> you can't do that. I can't I can do that. Just, that's I why I do it at there. the office now. So how 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 uh, soon do you start looking at your gear when you lay it out? This is a question I had because somebody yeah. asked me, same thing. You, you're getting prepped for a hunt. I know Neville likes to lay his out like a month. Yeah, <laughs> He'll like have me. a room three weeks or whatever. I think he said he likes to lay it all out in his room and just sit there and look at it and kind of you know pick and choose over mm -hmm. it, just make sure he's got everything. But I feel like if I start too soon, I forget yep. things. I just, yeah, I get to the end and I'm like, oh, I'm ready to go and I'll throw everything in my backpack and then I'll get out there and I'll be like, oh, I forgot that thing, you yep. know? So like I have to like a couple days in advance, maybe mm -hmm. two or three, and I've got to get it all together with the list. Yep. So how you do it? Yeah. I used to do it where I'd lay it all out and then think like, oh yeah, like, like Neville, like I'm going to do three weeks ahead, like put them all in totes. So they're all ready to go. And then I can just either throw those totes in my truck or throw it on my backpack and then load up ahead of time. But then like Trail says though, like 
you start second guessing yourself. Did I actually bring this? Where is this at? I can't find it. Was your checklist correct? And so I've learned the lesson of not packing too soon. Laying it out's nice. I like to lay it out in a room and just look at it every single day. Walk by it, double check, look at my Excel spreadsheet to make sure I have everything. And then maybe three days before a hunt, that's where I'm getting really serious and really starting to make sure it's checked off. And now it's in a spot where it's in like the ready to go pile. Like this yeah. is all dialed. How do you do it? Um, how, uh, how do I do it without go hunt? <laughs> because if it, if it's not for go hunt doing a gear video and a food video and all this stuff, I'm like, you know, nine o'clock the night before. Really? Kind of, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just it's throwing bad. and going. Yeah, it's bad. I mean, I, do you ever forget things? Have not, you ever got out into the field and you're like, oh shit. Not, not really. So I, I was, I hunted so much before my wife and kid, mm -hmm. like it was just kind of a, it just all stayed together other than clothes, basically. Like mm -hmm. it all just stayed, right? As long as I put back what I had used previously, whether it was electrical tape or glue or whatever it was, as long as I put those back, like I was just kind of always ready to roll. Um, but I got into a habit of that to a, to a pretty bad point where I, where I like would always get tripped up was food. Cause I, you guys know, I like to have my food very specific, yeah. but then when I would wait that close to a hunt, I'd always have to like, you know, throw in a, something that I didn't want, but it like kind of made up for what I couldn't get mm -hmm. kind of a thing. And, uh, yeah. So anyways, that's, that's what I would do back in the, in the past. But now with go hunt, it's great. Cause now I always have to be ready <laughs> and shit. I don't leave for three weeks and I am like ready. Yeah. Yeah. I have to be. We got to do videos and all this stuff. You yeah. Know? That is the power of doing videos. Cause like you realize then, like you think you're ready. Yeah. And you might realize, oh, wait, I forgot this. I forgot a toothbrush or yeah. my toothpaste or toilet paper's not even on. I here. forgot black rifle instant oh. coffee. Yeah. I, had a, yeah. I realized that because I got to do a gear video and I want everything that I have. So then I had to run into Brady's and be like, hey, do you have any extra while mine gets here? Yeah. So I did realize I forgot something. Yeah. But this is why, though, I think the power of like actually having a gear list. Whether it's gotta ex, have it. Whether it's Excel, Google Sheet, you can download the one I've been doing for the longest time, where you can enter in everything. Because once you enter in all the items you have, after so many hunts, you realize, well, I never even used that item. Cross that item off, mm -hmm. get that out of your pack list, make different pack lists for different seasons, different hunts, and then you have a certain area where I can go through it when I'm packing right now for Alaska, where I can mark P next to something. And if I mark P next to it, it means I'm, I packed it. I say my pack. <laughs> mine's an P X. For, P for packed. P yeah, for mine's packed. An X mine's an X. X, X, X. Yeah. So like then I know exactly I have it. So I'm looking at it like two days later, if I'm doing it three days ahead of time, like I already realized, hey, I already put my, you know, my stove in my stove or my fuel canister in my stove. It's already there. I don't have mm -hmm. to worry about it. I don't have to stress about trying to find it. It's done. It's there. It's dialed. Do you guys, do you remember, did you ever used to do just like a notebook gear list? You'd write oh, it yeah. out? I'm a huge. That's I, the other I would, thing. I would prefer to do that. Like print it out if I had a printer. Like I'm much better. I don't know what it is, but like my computer, if I mark it as an X, it doesn't mean the same thing as if I had it on a computer in, on a piece of paper and I checked exit. it off or took a highlighter and li highlighted it yeah. off. Like yeah, I don't know why that is. It's a small difference, but for mm -hmm. me, if I can print it off and run down my list, I also like to like make my food list and go to the grocery store and you know check it exit off. Up. As I go. Yeah, yeah. Exit, that's the other yeah. thing. Go hunts changed for me now too. Is we have to do it in Excel because everybody wants to yeah. use it and we use it other places. And if I do it on a notepad, nobody can use it. But I, st I still, I mean, I do it first on notepad yeah. and then I put it into Excel. <laughs> so I, I still do both, but before I would never do Excel sheets. Yeah. I want, you guys have never been on a, I'm trying to think if you've ever been on a hunt where you forgot something. It's yeah. the worst. You ever done that? I was trying to think off the top of my head if I ever had that happen. Thank God I don't. I don't think I have. Like I've never got to a trailhead and forgot my boots or something like that. I forgot lighters a lot. Oh really? And realized while I'm driving, like, oh shoot, I don't have a lighter, but I had one in my truck, or I stop at a gas station and pick one up. Right. I realized that while I was driving, like, hey, I never grabbed those. A no. lighter is an item that's in my. You, you talk about items that are in your pack you never use. A lighter, I never well, use yeah. a lighter. Yeah. I always have one because oh, I have, you have to. You have your stove is yeah, self ignited. It's, yeah, it's got a self ignited. Yeah, I don't have yeah. one of those. Yeah. But yeah, it's a self ignite. But then, you know, I never build fires ever when I'm out yeah. there because I don't hunt that much late season stuff. Because you're soft. That's <laughs> it. I'm, I'm hard. That makes me hard. I don't even oh, build yeah, a fire. Man. I'm oh, just. Oh, shoot. Yeah. He's I, tougher my bad. Than, I apologize. I'm cold for than yeah, I've never, I never really I never build a either. fire, but I have a, you have to have a fire kit, I feel like. It's like one of those things I never use, but it's I feel like I have pouch. to have yeah, it. Yeah, it's the fire. You got to yeah. have it. It makes me wonder do I need to carry a fire kit? Mm, maybe. 
I might not. Uh, Maybe I don't. Maybe I'm just packing it around for for nothing. <laughs> Rather for have nothing. it, not need it, than need it, not have it. I can't. I can't think of anything I've ever forgot my pack. But one time I was hunting Utah with my family, and we all of us had to. Well, me and my dad and my uncle Heath had tags, and we were shuffling vehicles a lot, depending on where we were going. Mm-hmm. And I forgot my gun in the other truck. Oh no! But you know there was my dad and the other ones. But I forgot that, and I was pretty pissed. Yeah. That's the only thing I can think of that I forgot. I've never forgot anything going into hunt, but I have gotten back to the trailhead and left things like sitting in front of my truck and pulled mm. off and took off because I was just like eager to get home. You know, yeah. I had my animal down and was able to go home and had to go back and get a bow or. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Bow would be a bad one. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that that happened, but it happened. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to drive like 18 miles back to the trailhead. Holy I was shit. in a panic. Thinking somebody jacked yeah, it. Yeah, because I was yeah. like, I'd set my bow down in front of the truck and I'd loaded everything in the back. Um, yeah, and I was freaking out. I got, I got what, 18 miles down the road and I was like kind of making inventory, thinking about everything. I looked back in the back seat and there's my backpack and I was like, shit, I wonder where my bow's at. <laughs> and then I start thinking about it. I'm like, oh yeah, I did set the bow in front of the truck. It was like sitting on a log. He pulled up to it, you know? And uh, yeah, I had to bust ass back to the trailhead and they're still sitting there. Waiting Isn't for it me. funny how your mind will do that to you? Just ran, like the most random times it'll pop and be like, holy shit, oh. I forgot that. Yeah. Just totally random. You ever waited tables? No. No? Really. I waited tables in college. They, I, I, I waited tables at Chili. So. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I did that in college, but they have them, they call them chili mares or like nightmares because you would be, you get so busy. This is, I'm completely off on a tangent, but you would get it's so, great. you get so busy in a night, especially like on a Saturday night when it was the only restaurant in town, like small town. Um, you would, you would like forget people's random things they'd ask for. Like you walk by a table and be like, Hey, can I get a side of ranch or whatever? Yeah. And I would be in class like four days later and I would remember their face and I would <laughs> remember them asking me for a side of ketchup or a side of ranch or whatever. And I'd be like, Oh shit, I totally forgot that. But yeah, you'd have nightmares like about it. The best part about this, I've known you for so long. I've hunted with you. You didn't know I waited no tables. No clue you waited tables. <laughs> yeah. And especially at Chili. <laughs> two years. Two, two <laughs> restaurants, Ruby Tuesdays and Chili's. Uh, uh, yeah. Sweat podcasts are great. Never yeah, I put my trail. way through college waiting tables. Tips good are good. For you. I was good a regular waiter. <laughs> I don't know if you actually, Forgot a lot I, I was stuff, a pretty huh? good I had a manager. He told me one time, he's like, you know, he called me and I'd been there like maybe a month. And he was like, you know, here's the thing about you as a waiter. He's like, you're a pretty good waiter. He's like, nobody's ever lacking anything. And he's like, but you're just not that friendly. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, uh, can you work on like, we'll call it a table side manner. Can you work on your table side manner, you know, with guests? And I was like, I don't know. I'm like, you know, I think is it the most important thing that your drink was never empty. He's like, for yeah. sure. he's like, yeah, that's a point. That's how I am. I'm like, yeah. I don't want my waiter to visit with me. I don't want to see like balloon animals or anything like that. <laughs> I just want my food and I want my drink full all the time. And if he does that or she does that, then I'm good to go. But I would agree with that, honestly. Yeah. Anyway, that's the kind of waiter I was. Anyway, long, that was a long that's tangent. Awesome. Back to gear. Back to gear. How do you want to tackle this? Do you uh, want to hit a promo? Do you want to? Yeah. Hit us with the promo. 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 Uh, sign up for Go Hunt Insider account. Uh, still a great time to sign up for Insider uh, even if you're looking for an over-the-counter opportunity or even if you're wanting to start as I am, which is weird because we're just not even really fully into hunting season. But if you're starting to already kind of think about next year, I mean, you've December, right, is coming. It's not that far out. you got to start thinking about buying permits potentially in a state like Idaho, maybe Arizona. Well, Arizona. Yeah, Arizona for sure. That's one that's like I'm definitely doing this year. Like I'm, I'm bummed out that I didn't buy an OTC deer tag yeah. in Arizona last year. So... Um, yeah, all the, all the different uses for going on insider accounts. So use the promo code podcast. Uh, if you do that, we're going to give you 50 points back, which is 50 bucks to the go hunt gear shop, which you can use towards the purchase of any and all the gear that we have. I don't think I have anything here on the table that we don't carry in the gear shop. So use the promo code podcast, sign up for an insider account, get points, buy gear. <laughs> nice promo. How was that? Good. That was, that was a good. good one. Not too bad. Cool. So let's talk, let's talk gear. Let's do pack dump. Let's, uh, well, how do you want to tackle it? Do you want to start? Well, you, you, well by the time system? this launches, it's almost going to be September. Yeah, which is which prime is, time. Which is what? Elk season, I hear? Metal Bugle, bugle too. Metal Bugle too. Yeah, so you guys are both got some elk hunts you're going on. Mm-hmm. Yep. What are you taking for calls? So I, we talked about it on a previous podcast. I am a huge fan of really soft cow calls mm-hmm. and fawn and cow calls working in on bulls, just being as quiet as possible, not making any noise. It's like pressuring bulls away or anything um especially in areas that like bulls have been called to before all that kind of stuff and this phelps 
the easy sucker, which you were just messing around with it. It is yep. kind of weird to breathe in to make a cow yeah, call. Yeah, it's, it's odd for me having blown calls, you know, yeah. whether it's a bite and blow, like an easy estrus. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a bizarre feeling to suck in and make and, noise. But what I love about it is how soft of a cow call this makes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm taking, you know, my, my normal reed calls, which are, uh, the Phelps, the, with the orange one, what's the orange one called? Orange amp. Yeah. Just the amp, the amp orange. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's my go-to just reed call. Mm-hmm. But man, as soon as this came into the gear shop and I picked this up and just started messing with it, the softness of this is for me exactly what I'm looking for when I'm working yeah. on a, on a group. I had uh, Dirk on my podcast and he was playing with it. Just kind of showing me that thing is so sounds so good yeah it does for a simple you know bite suck in Mm -hmm. you know produce and i think the the other cool thing about it is if you got and he kind of noted it is if you got hunters that are don't have a lot of experience if you're hunting with your kids even like your kid can make cow and calf so it sounds really easy with that thing it blows my mind that they thought to create that something totally different yeah suck in make a noise how does that work they're probably working all kinds of elk calls Uh, yeah but that suck in just allows for such a softer, yeah, like you don't, really, you don't have to have that pressure, yeah. that blowout pressure to, to make that noise. And that's, man, I'm excited for that one. Gotcha. I'm using, uh, I still like the bite and blow, so I've got that easy estrus acrylic. Um, I, I have a wood one as well. I like the sound of that acrylic. Why do you like the acrylic? I don't know. One? It's just, cl- to me, it sounds clearer. I don't I don't know. And last year I used the wood one quite a bit too, so I've gone back and forth, but I do like the sound of that. Uh, and then, you know, I've already blown some bugles, but the Phelps metal bugle tube, I think it's got a great sound to it, even though it's a little bit heavier. I'm going to pick that up. I yeah. like that. Yeah. Sounds nice. Oh, I do. Yep, yeah. I like yeah. it. Yeah. And then, uh, my favorite is the Maverick. So shout out Dirk. It's just the, the red Maverick signature call. Um, you know, it was interesting. So I was talking to him, he was, I was asking him like, what's a, cause we get this a lot. I get it a lot. Like if you're brand new to using a diaphragm elk call, uh, people want to know like what's the best diaphragm call for a beginner. And he was like, you know, it's not really like cut and paste. It's not like there's lighter latex is better for a new user because people's mouths and the way they blow the amount of air that they put out through their mouth is just different. It may not matter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm like an ultra experienced elk caller, but for me, right, right from the jump that uh, Maverick seemed to work for me. It seems to be like the right amount of pressure, the light, the right thickness of the latex. Um, so, and another thing that he suggested to me, I thought was interesting is like, you know, he'll buy four or five and go through four or five a year. Um, I think I had that one last year. So for me, it's time to like probably buy four or five new ones and just kind of update. Is it one of those things you're just buying some to test out, see what works for you? And that's what he suggested is buy five or six different kinds, different thicknesses of latex and just try them and find out what works for you and the amount of air that you put out, like how hard you want to blow through it. Um, I do like, see, there's a, there is a pack that you can buy called the pitch black. It's got a pitch black one, two, and three, which are different latexes, different thicknesses. I think that's a great starter kit. Just kind of get you used to what you like. And there's definitely, I'm trying to think, I think it's number two, I want to say. And I also have an amp gray in there that I like, but I think for me, almost all the you know bugling I do is with that amp uh, Maverick. Where are you storing your diaphragm calls? Oh, that's a good hunting? question. Because um, I wish I had a better. I mean, everybody all has over. The, yeah, <laughs> usually my front pocket or yeah. like my cargo pocket, the front pocket. Um, you know, they make the little pinch things that you can put on a backpack strap. And I think that's probably the best bet. Uh, I know guys that wear things on their cap brim, but mine's in my right pocket usually never just, like in the zipper of your marsupial or anything like that or no it just seems like i don't know i keep it in my right front pocket and i just know yeah. it's always there i mine's, usually keep three or four of them just because i lose yeah, them me too. You know, in and out of my pockets mine's definitely found its way into the front of the marsupial quite a few times really? yeah. yeah but it just gets crushed in there i don't know what it is yeah but i do i do want to you just made me remember i also picked up the phelps mini amp I have some video of my kid blowing bugles okay. with this thing, and he rocks it. He loves it. Well, I've is that where you long or podcast no? <laughs> ago? I told you, I I have quite the gag reflex, mm-hmm. and I these the the normal sized reeds like for whatever reason when I'm hiking around and trying to carry in the side of my mouth and all that, it I just I can't do it. This little these little baby ones that are made for it literally says women and children, and I'm not that small of a person just narrow, it narrow just, palette maybe it fits mm. perfect for me mm. yep i love these little mini diaphragm elk calls my kid will blow he loves that thing really but yeah but I, I think it i don't think it i don't think it has to do anything with who you are i just think it's just size of your mouth and your palate and potentially like you're saying your gag reflex yeah 
Yeah, and I think uh, it's not a bad idea to buy them and try them. I, I and it's they the orange and the gray, which I like that gray one as well. Yeah, but that orange one, which is my go-to, but now it's in this mini size. I freaking love it. Yeah. Hmm. What about you, Brady? Elk calls? No? Yeah, I usually use an elk call a lot on those mule deer hunts. <laughs> you know, those mule deer, when you find them. You have an elk tag this year. Are you going to pack an elk call no, of I'm any not, kind? I am not. Even you though sure? it's, it's October. Yeah. No. What if they're second cycle? I know. I'm just going to let them do their thing. All right. I'm going to hunt them like mule deer. You don't want to call one in and shoot it? <sighs> not really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being straight just on. Just so on about it too. That brings up the point. I know that we're going to talk about because you're headed to Alaska. Yeah, are we I'm saying no, that I'm Alaska in five days. I don't know if we were saying that or not. No, you're so go. sensitive. About I am it. very sensitive, but when, hopefully, knock on wood, you'll see me with a big old bull moose, and you'll kind of realize where I'm probably at anyway. Any calling for moose? Have you get? To, have you talked about that at all? Yeah, I mean, when I hunted moose before, I shot a Canadian bull mm-hmm. and actually called that one in myself. Just making, you know, the random stuff you always see. Plug your nose and, you know, doing those little grunts. And do you want to do one for us? I don't even know how to do it. No. <laughs> Come on. No, no, I'm good. No? Okay. Fair enough. So, yeah, I'm probably going to do some of that. I mean, even then I did the old Jim Shockey method back in the day and put my bow above my head and walked back and forth. And mm-hmm. I was actually able to sneak in on a bull really good because I was a bow hunt and shot my moose with my bow back then. So I got a rifle now, though. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure there'll be some calling, but we're actually going pretty early trying to get some more of these bulls when they're kind of bashered up in some higher places. And so maybe they're not going to be, you know, full going yet, but. So no, but, no moose calls no, other just, than maybe some. Just a mouth, just doing mouth it for mouth. Yeah. Mm. But no Got dedicated it. call. Got it. But yeah. That, that's, that's a lot of gear you got to bring to go on one of those Alaska hunts. Yeah. It's, oh, it's, it's a lot. It's ridiculous. It's a hard, it's a lot to manage. And like we we're talking about the, the planning and prep. Like I've been doing this for at least three weeks now, like looking at my gear, figuring mm-hmm. out what I need, figuring out what, I, what are the holes in my gear because such a different hunt, you know, I'm flying up there. And once mm-hmm. you get those small towns, if you forget anything, you're, yeah, you know, you're shit out of luck. Mm-hmm. I went moose hunting. I just got off of a elk hunt, just threw everything out on the parking lot there in Salt Lake and just loaded it back up in the backpack and jumped in and went. But I remember that feeling of being like, this is a different beast. Yeah. Cause the weather is completely different. It can be, I mean, you can be cold and Rain every day, all day. Yeah, you know, I'd upgrade like, my rain gear. Yeah, it could be or, here. what yeah. did you go with? What? Let's start. Yeah, let's talk layering system. Do you want to do that oh, real quick? Yeah. We'll, let's, we'll we'll do we'll do this systematically. Let's do uh, let's do layering systems, clothes, and then maybe sleep systems, camp kitchen, yep. hydration, and then packs, and then maybe any weapon kind of stuff that you want to talk about. Yeah, definitely. So, can. so let's do that. Let's do layering first. What are you looking at as far as layers to go to Alaska? Uh, well, like I just mentioned, rain gear. So uh, I purchased a, I don't even, it's an older set of the uh, Thunderhead jacket and pant from okay. Sitka. It actually has the ones with like the cutout little like knee pad section on it. It's like greener colored. It's, uh, yeah. Are you talking, you're talking, it's more quiet, right? It's got yeah. like a brushed fleece yeah, exterior. It's, a, yeah. it's a little heavier. Yeah, a little heavier, but mm-hmm. I, I figured I'd want it, you know, I usually carry the two point top, top and bottoms, but for this hunt, I want a little, a little better rain gear. Why not the storm front? Too heavy? Too heavy, yeah. Too big? Too bulky? I'm just going in the medium. Gotcha. Medium range. So rain gear is going to be big. I'm obviously going to probably be living in those. You know, I'm going to have waders as well. Okay. So. Are you doing a float hunt? It's going to be like a combination float. Like I have an alpaca raft and or so. I'm hoping to mainly use that for, uh, you know, transportation of meat. Like hopefully we can kill something in area where there's water and then, you know, use that raft to float float down to get the meat out. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so rain gear is going to be really important. Uh, most of my other layers are kind of going to be very similar. Heavyweight hoodie, core lightweight hoodie, ambient hoodie, um, Kelvin light down jacket. Wool or let's talk base layers. You're talking wool or synthetic. I'm why. actually, so sickness came out with the new Merino. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually taking some of the Merino zip off leggings down below intercept the new intercept pant pant with the hip vents on the side. Super excited about that. They got a new improved, uh, knee pad area which i've been wearing them at the rifle range quite a bit love them and uh i am going to be carrying one of their uh marina wool um core was it core 130 top the 120 yeah mm-hmm. so i'll be taking one of those but i'm also going to take the normal just core lightweight hoodie because that's my i say it all the time it's my favorite piece of all time lorenzo wool or synthetic synthetic yeah i've i used to wear Marina a lot synthetic no, no distinction between the two Duh. like no i uh, you don't like one or the other ever so, no, I have really sensitive skin. Mm-hmm. Um, 
when I was a kid, I was on Accutane. Almost for quite fragile, a, you'd say? Yeah. <laughs> um, I was on Accutane for quite a long time in high school. Yeah. And for, for whatever reason, like uh, there are certain parts of my skin, like right here on the sides of my mm -hmm. neck and then like right here on my underneath my armpits, more on my lap though, like yep. right where my lap muscle is. If I wear any contact on skin wool, it that that part of my skin just absolutely flares up. I can't do it. Gotcha. It drives me nuts. So just straight synthetic. Just straight synthetic. Purely my only for the sense that you have sensitive, yeah. your skin gets. There's not a single piece of wool that I've put on direct to skin that hasn't flared up my skin right there. Gotcha. Brady, do you ever wear synthetic over wool or do you care? I, I prefer synthetics all the time. Okay. Yeah. Just based on what? I don't know. Back in the day, it was always that sweaty dog smell on a bunch of the merino wool. From the wool? Yeah. When it gets like sweaty all the time. But I think synthetics just dry out quicker. Seems to me quicker. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I went, I used to do a lot of merino wool and I switched over to synthetics and now I'm going to test that a little, a few pieces here and there, but I'm still mm -hmm. just a straight synthetic guy. I'd rather have synthetics all day. What about you? Man, <laughs> I, I'm kind of a mixed bag, I guess. So I would say historically I've been mostly all synthetics, you know, for the same reasons. Uh, just, I like the fact that they dry out really quick. Um, the other thing is, is, uh, wool. I don't mind the smell of it when it gets, it, it doesn't stink like BO, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's got kind of a wet, like a wet dog, wet sheep kind of smell, you know? So I do prefer that. Uh, I will say like early season, hot weather, arid country. I kind of like Merino wool because I'm not really worried too much about it getting wet and then staying wet. Cause it just kind of helps cool me off. You know, mm -hmm. I'm always pretty warm anyway. Um, I will say like this last weekend, I wore a base layer wool t-shirt and, and it sweat out completely. And uh, <clears throat> it's a little bit heavier. It wasn't the Sitka one. Uh, it wasn't Stone Glacier one either. I can't remember who makes it. But it was wet like a day and a half later. It was still wet. Like, And it was raining outside, you know. So like mm -hmm. the temperature wasn't high enough that it ever really got to a point where it was going to dry out. But it was uncomfortable and cold. And I hated it. I didn't like it. You know what yeah. I mean? So I think I've, I've kind of landed at a place where if it's like early season, warm weather, I'm going to go with a lightweight Merino, like a 120 from Sitka. And that's what I've got on my elk list, kind of what I'm planning on taking. But pretty much anything else, I think I'm going synthetic just for the fact that it dries so quick. Yeah. The important question mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, boxers, Merino or merino or synthetic? Just free balling. Really? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <it's just> a <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't like wool. I like synthetic boxers briefs, yeah. So yeah. my favorite are... Uh, Outdoor Research Echoes, which are super way light, yeah, really lightweight, but I just like those. I like the way they fit. And I like the waistband on them. Um, what about you? Sax Quest. Sax Quest. Yep. Are they are those the tight ones, like a compression almost? No, they have. They're more like dot air technology thing. They My breathe man. really well. Oh, yeah, Lorenzo's thought, got his have, on right now. Got him on right now as well. Uh, I used to use merino wool boxers back in the day, and I always would you know hike around, and your ass is a little bit wet, and you sit down in glass. I always like I'm just like shuffling ass. my ass around, yeah. your ass just starts itching. With merino wool. <laughs> it's, it's a ass. thing. It's not good. It's a huh. thing. Yeah. I don't so I haven't used them in a long, long time. All the merino boxers that people make, they're long. And I don't like them real long. Mm. Like I don't I, I don't want them short either, you know, but I don't like a super long one. It just feels like it's, yeah, it's just either, too much always pulling. It's either really long or really short. Yeah. There's no in between. Must yeah. be nice for you two that you guys' thighs don't rub. Must be super nice. <laughs> I would love to understand that. Runner's yeah. legs. <laughs> so you, you wear sacks then? I do, yeah. Do you guys ever, like, you, does the ballpark pouch for you, I mean, work out? Does it that works make sense? Out. Do you care about it? No? Mm, whatever. No? It, like, doesn't change my life one way or the other. Mm. Right. No, Chris right. Porter, though. You never, he swears The Undy King. It. Yeah. He you never uh, thought that you, like, would have chafed if you didn't, you don't think there's anything there that helps with chafing anything? No? I mean, it All definitely right. helps with chase, chafing mm -hmm. for me. Like, but it's more, for me, it's more the fit on like in the thighs and the upper thigh mm -hmm. where mine touch, which, you know, you guys don't. Yeah. It's just these, you know, these well-built legs. <laughs> um, but that, that's more where I'm concerned. Not like, not in the crease next to my, mm -hmm. my gonads, you know, I'm like more on that upper thigh. Gotcha. That's so as long as it fits used. tight there, mm -hmm. then I'm good. I was wondering what word he was going to pick for that. Yeah. Huh? Gonads. That was like one of those Scientific scenarios term. you can see it coming and yeah. you're like, where, where are we going with it? Yeah. Where is, is this a bleep on the podcast <laughs> or are we letting that one roll? Like, what's he going to use? You guys did not trust that I was going to go the scientific route, did you? Mm -hmm. Gonad Testicles, you could say that, I could have said that. right? Yeah. That's that's legal. Yeah. What, what, you, what about socks? Oh, darn tough. Darn tough 212s? 
2012s, yeah. 2011s for me. 11s? Mm-hmm. I do also like, we've been carrying, I don't know if you guys have tried them, but the uh, hollow fleece alpaca. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's a more comfortable sock. Like, no, you know, really? Oh, man. What sets it apart? Alpaca. <laughs> they're <laughs> well, awesome. <laughs> I don't know. They're, they're just super soft. They're mm-hmm. really, really soft. The interesting thing about them is I almost wish that the, the lower portion of them had a little bit more cushion. They were a little bit more, you know, beefed up throughout the lower portion of the, the sock. But the uppers, I mean, they're real, they're comfy. Like, they breathe really well. They tend to, like, retain their their warmth, you know, when you are cold. They move moisture pretty good. Mm-hmm. They're nice socks. I don't know if you tried those, but try them. We have them. Uh-oh. I haven't tried them. But, yeah, darn, darn tough 2012 is pretty much. 2012 is, I think, you got the, not sock. the 2011s, huh? No. Why? I don't know. I like the 2012 full cushion, mm-hmm. midway, just works. good height. Yeah, good height. I got, I got big feet. Yeah, those like, um, what is it in in Lord of the Rings? What are they called? Hobbit, Hobbit feet. I got like Hobbit feet. Harry? So gotta, no, not Harry, but like Brady just said. Did we just become best friends? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're talking about Lord of the Rings again. <laughs> we'll just say fully dimensional feet, like just you know mm-hmm. width, depth, height, the whole way around. So it's kind of nice to like strip a little bit of uh, gotcha. of size right there. A little know? less volume. Yeah, exactly. That makes mm. sense. Mm. Do you wear liner? Uh, liner d- sock? D- d- late season, I will. Um, like a poly thin one? Yeah. I'm not even sure. Is that I'm for, sure it's that for blisters or just moving moisture? Uh, I have really skinny feet. So most of the boots are always really fat for my foot. Mm-hmm. So I get a lot of heel slip a lot of times too. So I'm just trying to like take up volume mainly. Are you the guy that when you look at your foot, the laces are touching the yep. eyelets? I just, are always touching. You, you got them sent. Just, All, it's like not like even down a boot, the bottom, it's a, up on the top. Like, it's like a burrito wrapped around yeah. your yeah. foot. And I'm like, why are these laces so long? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's definitely Brady. Yeah. Gotcha. What do you do? So you had pants. You have the intercept pants. Intercept pants. You're wearing a, you got a long john, essentially yep. like a merino base it's, layer it's if you need it. 330. Okay, and then you're going 120 merino core for a base layer on yep. your top. What are you doing mid layers and exterior? Uh, ambient, heavyweight, and then... Uh, you're doing an ambient hoodie and a heavyweight hoodie? Yep, just in case. Okay. Yep, and then I got the Kelvin light down, and I'm bringing the Aerolite vest. Oh, I have a vest. Yeah, big vest guy. Ve- ve- you use a vest? I don't use a vest. I was going to ask you, what? We had, we had this discussion on a call the other day. Like, I like just... Sometimes I like just throwing out a vest and not having bulky shoulders. You know, like I have an extra shoulder things. Even my arms are really long extremities. Do you ever just wear your vest, nothing else? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would make me way happy. <laughs> have I? No. 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 Can you see Brady in a puppy vest? Actually, yeah. That would be amazing. <laughs> no, I've, I've done it in the past. Mm-hmm. And it just like, you know, because it's gear and you're excited to use gear. And then every time I've ever worn it in the past, I'm like, what? What is, what is this? What yeah. am I doing? What is this? Yeah. So, hearing what I'm wearing, is there any holes? You've been to Alaska. What are you doing for hat? Uh, The uh, Fall Raven Byron. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. stocking hat. Gotcha. Uh, Any holes? I would say, what are you doing for boots? Uh, Probably Kentrick Mountain Extremes. Okay. Good boot. Yeah. Gator? Yep. Peaks. Okay. No, man, I think you're probably spot on. I mean, I got for gloves, I'm going to do... Yeah, um, gloves. What do I got? Sick of gunner gloves. Mm-hmm. Uh, Glass and mittens at all? Traverse glove. I do have the uh, Sicker Bl- Blizzard GTX mitten. Gotcha. So it's going to have the little shell and then, then the uh, mm-hmm. little insulation. Do you plan on being it, really, it being really cold? I mean, right now the highs are in the 50s. Like, that's a high. Yeah, So, like, mornings, mornings should be pretty cold. I'm hoping it freezes to knock back all the mosquitoes. Yeah, the, yeah, for sure. That is kind of it's a catch twenty two when you want, yeah. you know, you want it cold enough yeah. for that, but not enough to freeze every day. But I, mean, I hate, I hate like carrying too much clothing because you realize you're not going to wear them all because you're going to be sweating the whole time. Somebody in a rain jacket, most likely. Yeah, I had a friend tell me one time when you're in Alaska, and I've said this before, but it's it makes good sense. In fact, I was thinking about it on the way down today, but it doesn't really. When you're in Alaska, a lot in a lot of cases, it really doesn't matter if you're wet or dry. Because you're always wet. It's oh, just the, the biggest issue is whether you're cold or warm. You know, mm-hmm. if you can retain warmth because you're going to be wet. Yeah. So I would say, and the other thing about being in Alaska is it's you're constantly, you know, putting layers on and taking layers off all the time because you're sweating, you're hiking. And yeah. I mean, I don't think I've ever been anywhere in my life like Alaska where you are just 
always working. Like if you're hiking flats, you're high stepping through vegetation, you know, you're fighting through, you know, Mm -hmm. just it's a jungle in a lot of cases. Yeah. So, so I I nailed it. I think you nailed it. Yeah. I think you're you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. I was curious whether you go with the intercept pan or the mountain pan because I know you love the mountain pan. I love the mountain pan, but I kind of want to, I want to try out the intercept pan because of the vents. I just want to dump heat. It's kind of an in-betweener between like an ascent pant and a mountain pant. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good weight. Yep. I, I like the weight of that pant a lot. Mm-hmm. Yep. Lorenzo, you're going elk hunting. Yep. Let's talk through what you got as far as clothing, base layers, layers. So insulation. Keb, Ag- Keb Agile Light Pants. Fell Raven? Fall Ravens. Mm-hmm. Um, Why little, that pant? Yeah, it's, I used it last year, and it, it like – as far as fit goes for me, mm-hmm. this is as good as it gets for me. The inseams, what is it, 32 and a half, which mm-hmm. is perfect for me. I don't have very long legs. Um, and it, it, like just the whole seat of the pants, like everything fits me super well and the give and the stretch to it, it's awesome. The side zips are nice. The side zips are awesome. It's just enough to dump some heat, but not enough to like yeah. start getting everything into your pants and driving yourself crazy. I wish that pant had knee pads. It's the only, the only really? thing. Yeah. I, I like knee pads. I just, don't like knee pads. Really? Yeah. I like them for just like tying my bootlaces. You know, if you're kneeling, you know, if a bull pins you down, or if you're stocking it on a buck and you got to go to your knees, mm-hmm. I like knee pads. That's the only thing about that pant that I wish it had is just a sleeve. I actually thought about taking it to a seamstress and just sewing some knee pads to the back side of that pant. Yeah. I've got a pair on right now. You have a pair on right yeah, now. Yeah, I do. If you walked around our office today, you would see, I don't know how many pairs of that pant. Almost just, everyone. Yeah. I wish they had a back pocket too. See, so yeah, when it, when you sit with a back pocket, mm-hmm. those seams, like it starts to dig into you a little yeah. bit. You start to feel it after a certain amount of time glassing gotcha. or just sitting. That's so why I actually, like the intercept pant. No back pocket. Yeah, I, actually, I like I, a back pocket. I kind of like it. We're hunting. I don't know. You don't need to carry a wallet. What are you going to carry back there? My wallet. <laughs> just, I go to the gas just, station just, and get a Diet Coke. Just get more back problems while you're, while you're hunting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care my wallet. Your lumpy mind. butt. Yeah, but you're um, you're. Right. I see your point. But yeah, man, these these things are they're awesome. They fit me super <laughs> well. Um, so I'm I'm that. I'm uh, the 2011 socks, like I said, and then upper I'm the approach hoodie. Okay. Um, I love our approach hoodie. Obviously, mm-hmm. everyone can call me biased on this because it's ours. But goddamn, I love that approach hoodie. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll do that, and then I have. The uh, Stone Glacier Grumman jacket, Stone Glacier Grumman pant. Down or? Down. Mm-hmm. That's what those are for. And then I have, uh, I love that Boulder jacket from Kings. Oh, so yeah. That's my outer soft shell. Um, you taking a soft shell on a backpack hunt? Yeah, just back there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like we're in so deep, might as well just have, if I don't want to wear down, at least I can wear that. It's just kind of like almost going to act like a mid layer almost. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's super comfortable and it's really quiet, which is why I like it. So if we are hunting in the morning and I don't quite need down, that'll give me just enough over that approach hoodie that, you know, it's not going to bother me and it's quiet enough that I can still bow hunting. You're packing rain gear? I am packing rain gear. I'm taking the King's Paramount uh, jacket and pant. Um, you know, which this will be my first run with the Paramount. I used the King. I can't remember their last model before the Paramount, but the Paramount's much better. So I'm bringing that in this year. Um, you know, what's interesting though, is I'm, so I rescheduled my stone hunt. Mm -hmm. So I got it done with the outfitter. He actually just got back to me the other day, like two days ago. So I'm going up October 1st is my first hunt day. And so I'm actually kind of balancing like two backpack backcountry styles right now. And that's why I was asking you. Back to back. Yeah. Back to back. I could come home for five days off the elk hunt and then I head up to Canada. Oh, that's Um, living right. (laughs) It is living right. (laughs) I think that's amazing all this waiting to go hunting it's paying off <clears throat> yeah. you know back to back um but i'm i'm bouncing between two uh gear lists right now and that's why i was asking you if you think it's going to be super cold because i don't know quite how cold it's going to be in bc i mean it obviously is north but it's not as north as you mm-hmm. um and so my my gear list really doesn't change much mm-hmm. the only thing that is changing is i'm bringing the stone glacier the helio zip off bottoms yeah. Because I'm still, layer. I'm still going to use the Keb Agile lights, mm-hmm. um, and if it if it is cold, I'm just going to throw those on underneath, and really that's all that's going to change. Gotcha. What are you wearing for a boot? These Mammut. Uh, God, what are these called? I saw you wearing them. You've been wearing them around. Yeah, I'm trying to see. <clears throat> I've been Salewa almost exclusively, mm-hmm. um, and Salewas for they fit my. It's just like these Fall Raven pants for me. They just fit my foot 
great. I've never had an issue. I've worn, you know, the light ones, antelope hunting. I've worn the heavy ones on backcountry hunts, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I've never had an issue with Salewas. Um, but I love these Mammut, Mammut boots, the Tice Light Mid GTX. Mm -hmm. um, really stiff? Not, not terribly stiff, but stiff enough. What, why I really like them is I feel super athletic in them. So for bow hunting, mm. elk and bow hunting stone sheep in that country, it feels like it's just enough stability but at the same time like i can still be super light on my feet so you wear the same boot for both hunts yeah i am um i might i might do a liner sock up there um or i i don't know i'm i'm still debating if i'm gonna go insulated boot up there or not mm -hmm. i don't i don't know quite how cold it's gonna be yeah. i think you might want to honestly yeah neville neville had a pair of mammut kentos that was his favorite boot i, I mean I, he absolutely loved them I like these. I love these so far. Yeah. I really like how athletic I feel in them just as a bow hunter. Because a lot of the time, like, I love the Mountain Extreme Kinetrex, but, man, I do not feel athletic. Yeah, you can't feel the terrain. It's, when it's a great mountain boot. Like, I like just, my heels too much to yeah. <laughs> I don't, just eat my heels alive. They don't eat my heels at all, and I can really? wear them. And I think they're a phenomenal boot. Like, if you're just crushing mount, a, a mountain to get into the mm -hmm. backcountry, uh, they're an amazing boot. But man, when it comes to like doing a little tiptoe dance or whatever you got to do to kill something with a bow, yep. I feel so clumsy in those things. I don't know. Huh. They're, I don't know what it is. They're a little more like uh, that's a moose hunting boot. Yeah, big dumb animal. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, kidding. Can it track? But you know they're they're like, I don't know what the word is, but they're like thicker off the sole. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it's platform higher. the height, Plat stack yeah. height. The mm -hmm. stack height is. I just I don't feel athletic at all, and these have hardly any stack height. Yeah, they're low. Um, that's why I'm really loving these right now. No, you can tell a killer in the mountains when they're snow on the ground. You just look for that little K, that K, yeah. K, K track pattern when you're falling. Man, like, oh that yeah, that's a, that's a killer. That it's was like got, the first, Kenny's. yeah, first high end boots that kind of came to market that I remember anyway. And I had I had a lot of I had a lot of pairs of Kenny tracks. Mm -hmm. The first pair I ever had was one of my very favorite boots I ever owned. Yeah. But yeah, you'd always remember coming down a trail and you'd see that K pattern in yeah. the in yeah. the trail. The first stone I killed in 2013, I was in Kinetrex. I feel like you need to go back to them just to like uh, nostalgia. Yeah, good I killed luck. that one with a gun though. I want to kill this good one with luck. a bow, so I got to switch some. Yeah, switch some things up. Are you are you bringing gators? Yeah, I'm gonna there, not into New Mexico. Yeah, but I am bringing gators into uh, into Canada for sure. Mm -hmm. I haven't decided which ones yet. Most likely the peaks. Mm -hmm. um, just something something easy in case there is some weather on the ground and everything's super wet and soaked through. Mm -hmm. Um. And then, so New Mexico, back to New Mexico, then just the Go Hunt Dome beanie, um, yeah. the Stone Glacier grapple glove, just a little fleece liner if I do want to take the bite off my hand while I'm carrying a bow or whatever it is. It's a nice glove, just nice fleece line, take the bite out of it. I know this last weekend I didn't take any gloves at all, and it was just, you know, August, mid-August, but we got so much rain, and it was really cold. Like the one morning it was, it had to be in the 40s, I would bet, where I was at, and mm -hmm. like my hands were freezing. It's not, that, that fleece material, it's yeah. so nice to just take that little bit of bite off. Yeah. yeah, and I was doing a lot of glass, and I was wishing I had packed my gloves. Yeah. The, the big question is what kind of like hunting hat, like baseball style hat are you bringing? Hydra hat. Hydra hat? Yeah. That's I love one. these hydras. Yeah. They're game changers. Yeah. The, I mean, either this or a softy. These yeah. ones, these ones are a lot better with sweat I've found than mm -hmm. the, the softies are still really good. Don't they're get me comfortable. wrong. They're comfortable. And they're unbelievably comfortable, but the hydra hat just does a little bit better. I feel like with sweat, I've been training with both of them on. And, they have good, uh, hat, good hat selection right now going on. Yeah. Great hat selection. I'm Kevin's been yeah. Thank you, thank you, Kevin. <laughs> He's yeah. been doing a good job. Yeah, the softy two O um, is a great hat. I'll probably I'll, I'll do the the Hydra. Um, don't be mad at me if you see me in a softy though. Like it's kind of one of those like last minute decisions. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things. In the truck, which one you want to grab? Kind of how am I feeling myself? What's my yeah. what's my vibe? How mm -hmm. do I look which good? Which one do I look best <laughs> in? You know what I mean? It's like it's gonna come down to that. I'm not yeah. ashamed to say it. It'll yeah. come down to like look in the rearview mirror and be like, ah, this one's better. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, and then uh, obviously going up north, I'm going to take a uh, that down glove, that stone glacier down glove. What's that oh, one called? Glass. Uh, yep, yeah, yep. glove. I'm going to take that. Just I, I mean, obviously the mornings we're going to be sitting down on the valley bottoms trying to glass up for a while, and gotcha. So I'll make a little more warmth. Down that. booties. Yeah, haven't thought of it, you and should. I'll probably add I it. I know Trail will say yes. Oh, you should absolutely. You think so? Oh, I probably. Yeah, I actually. I wanted to yeah, curse. I'm going to make yeah, a note. I'm going to make. You should. 
They are really really nice. Down booties are the Especially at camp. Oh, man. Even if you don't peel your boots boots off because your feet get that cold and to glass, just around camp, you you get back to camp, pull your boots off, throw those down booties on. Mm -hmm. Those are the best. You can actually walk around in them pretty decent. Just made a note of it. That was a good ad. I'm going to add those. Those are fantastic. Which ones do you like? Uh, I've got the outdoor research ones with the aerogel. Yeah. Um, I've got a pair of those. And then I also have a pair that I've had forever, which is, uh, well, it's here designs. I think yeah. it's an old pair. I would like a pair of those Western mountain earrings. That's, that's all I have. Yeah. Those are yeah. They're the cat's so, meow. so nice. <laughs> yeah. And they're, I mean, that's like a little item and they don't weigh that much. And I mean, depending on the hunt, they're just like a little luxury item, but they make a big difference. They're like puffy pants. Yeah. Explain the use case. It's cold, um, okay. it's cold out. When, when would you use your down booties? Yeah, so down booties for me, my feet get really cold. Like I don't have good circulation in my feet. And so I use them a lot like mid to late season. So if I hike up to a point and I want to sit down in glass for mule deer or elk, uh, I a lot of times I'll peel my boots off and take my boot off completely. Sometimes I'll put my boots in my pack or, you know, lay them over. I've, I've had and the reason for that. Yeah, just so that they don't freeze up, yep. you know. Um, if I've got an extra jacket or something, even if it's my rain jacket, um, I'll wrap them up and throw them in my pack just to kind of help them from freezing solid, mm-hmm. which I don't really mind if they do get cold and freeze because essentially when I put them back on, I'm going to put them on and be hiking, right? So I'm yeah. building up body heat. But really what I'll do is I'll pull those down booties out and put those on for long glassing sessions. And like I feel like I can sit there forever and glass with down booties, whereas my feet, if I – left them in boots with wet sweaty feet yeah, it was already cold and it's constricted my feet just get solid like when i went on that white tail hunt in wisconsin same thing climbed up in a tree pulled my shoes off my boots put those down booties on and i sat there all day in down booties just you have a heat toasty. body suit huh no i wish <laughs> that that would be, pretty that would be nice. i'm talking november no midwest cold is a different cold it like is. i'm not that tough wildly different wildly different yeah. like cut you to the core and there were a lot of times sitting on stand like i i felt pretty okay in my feet just with yeah. down booties on and they're quiet yeah so that's my use case for down booties yeah i'm gonna add those I made they are so I'm great like, i'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that more i mean i don't whatever i don't care but i'm surprised that more companies could you know you got kuyu sitka you know who else um snow glacier uh i'm surprised that they don't make a down booty to be honest yeah what i really like too when you sit down and do that glassing thing and you bust those out and put your feet in them and your friend looks over at you like uh Mm-hmm. Can I get some of that? And yeah, like, yeah. yeah, you should have thought he of that. He did it on Porter's Hunt, and it looked it looked nice. Yeah. yeah, and puffy pants. Yeah. We didn't even really talk about those, but do you are you taking? Yeah, I forgot that. I'm gonna do the three quarter. The uh, sicker ones. Sicker ones. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm taking the full Grunman on both. Yeah, they're so light. I mean, what the Grum? It's sixteen 11? ounces. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've got some Western Mountaineering flight pants. I think that's been one of the best. Inv- I mean, mine look like a, you know, like a tarp. It's all patched up right yeah. now. It's got tons of you know poly patches all over it just because I've gotten holes in it and snagged it and brush and stuff. But I think in all the years of all the gear I've purchased, that's one of those things that I, I, I love, I love yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> no matter what hunt you go on, yeah. you're always carrying I down wish, hands. I wish I'd have taken them this last weekend, like even yeah. then. Yeah. Not, they, that's so August. Those don't leave my, my backpack. That mm-hmm. or the, ja- the Grumman jacket or the Grumman pant. They're, it's so light. And you think about like the warmth to weight ratio. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, it's crazy. It's, they just should go everywhere. It's basically like you're putting on a sleeping bag when you're glassing. Yeah. yeah. It, it really nice. does make it way more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Being comfortable is, I mean, it's Everything. a lot. You can yeah. glass harder if you're more comfortable. Yeah. It's, it's like a carrying fact. a glassing pad. A glassing pad is just a tiny, minimal thing, you know, whether it's the Stealthy Hunter one or just the one that we make the Go Hunt, you know, fold out one. It just is so nice mm-hmm. <laughs> to yeah. throw that thing down. Cool. Let's dive into you. Oh man, I'm not that much different than you guys. I got okay. I'll I'll start outside and work in. So I've got the Sitka Dew Point pant and jacket for my rain gear. Um, sometimes I will carry that lighter one, the SD, the Vapor. Yeah, the Vapor. Why? Why? Do you know why they stopped making that? I don't, but I love that thing. I know. I, I'm taking that. Uh, it's a single layer Gore-Tex on, on the antelope hunt in case it gets crazy. Really? Just gonna bring that with us so light. Throw it in my backpack. It's a single layer Gore-Tex, and I know that they only made it in black because yeah. they couldn't print couldn't to print it, it, right? Yeah. But that thing, I love that thing, and I've used it a bunch, and it's watertight. Yeah. So I I do take that sometime, even though they don't make it anymore. But normally, Dew Point. Uh, insulation layer, uh, the Sika Kelvin light jacket, which is just a puffy. Mm-hmm. Um, that will thing, it'll, it'll wet out. Just so you know, I got oh, yeah. mine completely drenched this weekend. <laughs> so you got to be you got to be careful with that. You got to make sure that you get your rain gear over the top of that thing yeah. before it absolutely drenches out. 
Uh, midweight, um, I like the core heavyweight pullover. Uh, I'm interested in using the intercept this mm-hmm. year, wool. It's got the elbow pads, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. I can't think of a scenario I've ever had to use elbow pads, but. The only time I ever thought about it was antelope hunting, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I know where you're going. <laughs> I'm happy to, to hear you've never used elbow pads. <laughs> Cut that one. Just <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to do any planks? Uh, I can't? No, no planks. I haven't done any planks. All right, then. You guys ever been cold enough yet to do planks or push-ups or anything oh, yeah. like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh, Air yeah. squats and jumping jacks. You have? Push-ups. Yes. Absolutely. I just sit there and suffer. I have absolutely been that cold. No way. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, base layers this year, I'll, I'll be doing the same thing, either the core lightweight hoodie, just a synthetic, or if if it ever warms up, you know, and it gets a little bit hotter, uh, I'll just go with that core 120 merino. And then... Uh, Pants. I'm using uh, either the Sitka Intercept pant or uh, my Fell Raven Keb Agiles is one of my very favorite pants. And that's what I wore all year last year. And I don't know that there's a pant that fits me better. Mm. Um, absolutely love the way those pants fit. You got you got big calves and thighs too, yeah, comparative big, to the rest of your body. And yep. it fits, it mm-hmm. fits us. The, like that build, it fits so well. Yep. They're, uh, they're a nice fit. One thing I didn't ask you guys, you guys wearing a belt? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A marsupial. Oh, I don't okay. have one. Yeah, the stretch web belt. Yeah. You? I have the OG Sika Stealth. I've just had it forever. Gotcha. They don't make it anymore, but it's just what I use. Probably should get a new one because it's starting to do a... I you know you, belts get where you put it on and it always mm-hmm. wants to... That's the Argali belt. You're always belt. tightening it the whole yeah. time. I've been using the Sargali belt, which I really like. It fits good. And the cool thing about it, it's got no clasp. But it just feeds through and then it holds tight from tension. Does it, it, does it really hold tight? It holds you, tight. You're actually not ever adjusting it? It holds tight enough that I can wear my quiver on it. Really? And, yeah, and it doesn't sag. And the other cool thing is it's got the sharpener, so you get a, a stone on the oh, back of it. Okay. Um, you also have a leather strop if you needed it. Is it too thick to fit through some pants? It looks pretty wide. It is pretty wide. I can't say I have a pair of pants that I can remember it not fitting. The intercept that I have on right now, like It'll I put the stealth belt that on. Because I did... like. Brad hooked me up on a pair mm-hmm. over that belt quite a, a couple of years ago. And I've worn on one or two hunts, but maybe I should just give it on a try. I like it. I like that belt. Maybe you might have convinced me, like the down booties with Lorenzo. Maybe I might switch to that. Uh-oh, your gear list is evolving as we yeah, talk. <laughs> I do like that belt, though. So that's uh. what I'm wearing for a belt. Socks, darn tough 2012. Yeah. And boots. I am... I you don't own every boot that we sell I, and go in gear shop. I wished I did. You I pretty wished, much do. I wished I did, to be honest. Because right now I'm like in, I'm in between boots. I'm just like, I can't really, I keep going back to the Alaska GTX. Uh, I got a pair of Zamberlin. I think they're the Sierra, which is a lightweight hiker. Uh, those gave me a little bit of hill rub. I think it's just the fact that I haven't broke them in a ton. And then I had, I had a couple of blisters I built on my own on a run. <laughs> um, so I think it's just continuing to aggravate those. But I, I love that Alaska GTX. It just feels like a hug on my foot. They're so comfy. Um, I wish they weren't so heavy. They're kind of heavy. Are you putting insoles in? I did put insoles in them. Yep. Which ones are you rocking? Um, Oboes. Hmm. The ones that we carry, just the oh, elbows. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're not uh, super expensive. I think they're thirty-five bucks or something. Do you swap them out every couple of years, or how? What's the I life don't. expectancy? In fact, I only started wearing insoles in that boot just as the other ones were complete. I mean, that boot's two years old. That Alaska GTX is two years old. The only thing that's wrong with that is the toe cap is kind of starting to peel on it. Hmm. Other than that, that boot is in great shape, and that's the one thing I think. I'll, about the Alaska GTX is like, if you want a boot that's going to last you like multi seasons, that's the one boot I've found that will really last. Mm. It's a heavy duty, hardy leather boot. If it lasts on you, that, that's I mean, a lasting it, boot. It lasts. And the sole, I mean, to me, it's like the right combination of rubber where it's, it's tacky enough. I feel like I have good grip, but it's like not so hard that it's like chipping out. Mm. Um, but I keep going back to it. And then uh, I had a pair of Hanwag uh, Mocker Trex yeah. that I really liked and I kind of finally wore through those. But that's the boot situation. I wish I had every boot in the Go Hunt gear shop. You kind every, of every time I look at you, I've I got, swear you have yeah, a pair of boots that you bought. I've got that Lost Portiba Equilibrium, which I like the I like to tread on that, and that's a nice boot too. But I just keep going back to Alaska because they're so comfy. Hmm. It's like a warm hug on your foot. It's, it's, you get those things where you have to go back to. Yeah, I just wish they weren't it's so like heavy. my bow. I just can't leave yeah. it. Yeah. So you're mainly talking about your elk setup, right? Mm-hmm. So right now, what if for your mule deer tag you have, Archie mm-hmm. Mule Deer, are you bringing any sort of stocking shoes on yeah. that? Yeah, I've got the Rimrock stockers. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I brought those, and again, I mean, I'll put them on and blow stocks in them because that's just <laughs> <laughs> my problem is, is I have a hard time finding a buck that I'm like committed to, like I'm gonna go stock that buck, you know. So yeah. there's a lot of bucks I sit and look at, and I don't ever put a stock on them just because I don't want to kill them, you know. I'm I'm waiting, kind of holding mm-hmm. out. Will you always swap over to the rim rocks, or will you stock in your boots? Uh, situation percent itself. I mean, to a certain point, and then I'll peel those off. I yeah. just I can't be as quiet yeah. in, a, in a boot. As it's I hard to feel the terrain, feel the rocks, like yeah. grab things. You need some dexterity yeah yeah those room rock stockers are nice i mean they've got oh, yeah. like a thick felt pad they've got the kind of the bungee cord built into it and a lacing system so you can pull them tight mm-hmm. um you can they're tall enough you can tuck your pants into them so it's it's a nice i mean they weigh a little bit i know a lot of guys just use wool socks and i think they have pretty good luck with them i want to pair those stockasins yeah have you seen those uh-uh. it's a all leather it's like a moccasin it's just a all leather moccasin yeah i have a pair of the ancients oh yeah yep. gotcha yeah, I would like a, I would like a pair of those to try them, but mm. I think they're about 170 bucks or something. Ooh. Didn't I see? Uh, mm-hmm. That's a good number. Yeah. <laughs> did Holy Paul? Shit. Did I see a photo of Paul where he just had wool socks and he took his like insole out and he shoved his insole of his boot into the wool sock? He took an old insole. Oh, it was an old one. Oh, I was, I was wondering how that works. I saw a photo that, of it, and I was like, that's a, something I've never actually seen that, someone do bow hunting. That guy, Jared Knighton, said he was wearing flip-flops. So he would put a flip-flop on, like, on a, over his regular sock, and then pull a thick wool sock over the top of that just to give him, like, a little bit of structure to it. He said it didn't work great, but I didn't know people were throwing different yeah. things underneath their wool sock. I, I used to uh, do the Vibram toe fingers. Five finger, yeah. yeah five finger things. Mm-hmm. I used to do those. I could see those working. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. We'll see. I'll let you know. I'll report back. I'm going to try those stock ascents at some point because I think those That's could be. awesome name. Yeah. It's a really it, good name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And supposedly they're saying they're uh, like cactus, you know, spine proof, um, but soft enough that you've got dexterity with your toes and your wow. feet so you can really sneak. So you, I'll, I'll have to get a pair at some point and get back to you. What are you wearing for gloves? Oh man, just the old Sitka Traverse glove. Yeah, Traverse is a classic. Yeah, just a soft shell glove. And yeah. again, it's just to take the bite off, take a little yeah. bit of sting out. But I can't shoot my bow mm-hmm. with a pair of gloves. So most I tried of, last year. Not a fan. Yeah. Ne- never doing it again. Yeah, I can't shoot. I can't shoot either my bow hand or my release hand. It just doesn't feel the same. So I'm mm-hmm. I'm not wearing a glove if I'm going in to I, final approach. For me, being a rifle hunter, like I touched earlier, the Traverse and the Sitka Gunner, Sitka Gunner gloves is the best combination ever. I wear those in Tajikistan, hiking around, mm-hmm. or I'm glassing all the time. Like they actually do provide a lot of insulation. Just those two together. Yeah, you know, they're a glove. I, we have a bunch of uh, outdoor research gloves. Oh yeah, and they make a nice glove. Yeah, They've they got do. A, a, uh, I think it's called the backstop sensor glove. Just now you can still run your phone with it. One of those. Oh, that's nice. I like that. So it's that. pretty nice. It's just a, again, it's just a soft shell glove. But I like those as well. I've got a pair of them. What separates? The gloves when you can what's that material on the tip do you know what that's called that you actually can touch your phone and work it because that's it's a nice who, little who thought of that yeah I mean, that's a nice little thing it's like something from silence of the lambs you know <laughs> skin you can still, you can still run your mouth puts the lotion in the basket <laughs> i don't know that, what is that is a nice little thing though yeah you know is. what i mean it's like you don't really think about it until you keep wanting to use your phone and you're like fuck this would be really nice yeah, if, if i could just use this have mm-hmm. to keep pulling your yeah. gloves off to use your phone yeah yeah that is nice that's kind of my layering system. Um, I would say having, you know, been to Alaska, I think you're spot on. I think you're dialed, dialed. I'm pretty dialed. Yeah, I feel good. The only thing I'm, the only thing I'm going through is like one more warmth piece mm-hmm. on the Canada hunt because I don't know. Well, I, I got to figure some out there. Just try that ambient hoodie. Really, mm-hmm. it is a really good piece. I was going to ask you because there's times. Uh, like what's the what what is the right time frame for the ambient hoodie in your opinion so last year in a state i won't mention i was basically hiking around the whole time with my backpack on in camp uh, it was cold out it was snow on the ground cord lightweight hoodie in the ambient hoodie okay and that's and what you were hiking in hiking in with your backpack yeah with backpack because that like active insulation i was actually able to stay cool but stay warm at the same time it wasn't mm-hmm. overheating and then when i would stop for some whatever reason, it wasn't sweated through anything. Like I was able to still breathe really well. Mm-hmm. And then I would just sit down and start glassing. And then when I made a little stock to go after an animal, I just had the ambient hoodie and the core lightweight on. And that those two combinations, even when it was snowing out, I was still totally fine. It wasn't, you know, getting a bunch, it wasn't, you know, wet snow. It was really dry snow. 
thing I like about it is how soft yeah. the face fabric on yeah. that thing is. It's really quiet and it's really lightweight for be, what it is. It'd be and great it's, for a bow hunter. It's, yeah. And I've worn it. I wore it last year in New Mexico mm-hmm. when I was with Neville and I was wearing it the same way you were just over the top of my base layer yeah. on cold days when I was hiking with a backpack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess it's a great, great piece. Yeah. I think it's a good, I think it's a good like mid to late September high country, just that over the top of your base layer. Yep. The thing I struggle with is like, do I take that over a core heavyweight hoodie? I know, the heavyweight hoodie though is such a classic piece. It is. It fits so good. Yeah. I kind of like this ambient hoodie looking at it. Fleece lined on the inside. It's great when you're glassing it's, and you throw that hood up. Mm. It's not real fleecy. It's like a it's big, it's like a, a large fleece. It's like you're wearing fur. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like You have to check it out. It, 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 everybody I talk to loves that piece, mm-hmm. myself included. Yeah, that's, I, I, I think I want to add just one more warmth piece because to, mm-hmm. that, to that sheet. And it, and it is really quiet, like really soft face fabric, really thin. Because I used to be kind of like you, Lorenz. I would wear a soft shell on some of these like later season hunts, but because of that ambient, I've ditched my soft shell and, and saved a ton of weight, but really? gained some insulation. And then I always have a rain jacket to throw on, you know, if I need some like something else that's a little more burly. Yeah, 13 ounces. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's quite a bit of. I anyway, I think there. that's a good piece. You may you may look at it. Do you want to hmm. jump over sleep systems? Sleep systems. I want to hear Lorenzo's. Lorenzo was talking about his the other day, and it's pretty crazy light and dialed. Oh, it's yeah. I'm I'm it's super, super dialed there. We're gonna save that for the end because you have a spreadsheet, but I want to hear your total weight for how many days because okay. you have that figured out. I do, and it's impressive. I think it's impressive. Thank you. It's nice to impress Trail every <laughs> so often. <laughs> I think I I think so. You'll, you'll you have to tell me at the end. Appreciate I'm, it. I want to hear it. But what are you doing for sleeping bag, pad, shelter? So sleeping bag is the helium bivy. I obviously, I'm not doing that in Canada. But bivy. Yeah. So mm-hmm. in Canada, I'll do the uh, the UL the Tiger Light ULT Big Agnes. Tent, mm-hmm. um, but on this on this hunt that I have this dialed in for on the backcountry elk hunt, the outdoor research bivium uh, helium bivy, mm-hmm. and then the Stone Glacier 15 degree chilcoot. I sleep really cold. Um, so there is part of me that wants to do that 32 degree quilt. Ooh, I would go with the 15, man. I know. I, I can't. I've I, been in that area you're going into. I get and nervous it's and cold. I, and I sleep cold, mm-hmm. right? Like the coldest time in your body is when you're in the deepest part of your sleep. That's when your body temperature is the coldest possible. Um, so a lot of the times when you get into that deep sleep and REM sleep, it's because your body temperature is down and, uh, I don't want to like be woken up through that right for mm-hmm. performance and all that so i like to sleep as warm as i can so i'm going to take the 15 degree which is 35 ounces um quite a bit different than than the uh that's not bad though it's yeah the quilt three, two pounds three ounces yeah which it's not bad but the quilt is uh 22.5 ounces true so you're losing Ten like ounces. a half a pound right mm-hmm. there you know over half a pound um and then the the thermarest uber light pad which is 12 ounces which is you got it right here uh, that's oh, not the Uber Light. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, the one the I'm NXT. taking to Canada. Gotcha. Because that one's got some R value. The the mm-hmm. Uber Light does not have much of an R value. Mm-hmm. Um, but sleeping with a 15 degree bag inside of a bivy, I'm mm-hmm. not worried about having an R value on my sleeping pad. You what know, do you like? A, what do you like about that uh, bag? Do you, the bivy? The bag, the actual, like your sleeping bag, the 15 degree, like the Stone Glacier. This will be the first year I'm using a Stone Glacier. What's really? my favorite thing about yeah, the Stone sure. Glacier? Mm-hmm. The shoulder volume. G- they yeah, have some they curve. have the shoulder volume absolutely dialed. Mm-hmm. It is like it's as good as it gets. Gotcha. I mean, you're you know, saying something for your giant. Yeah, shoulder. I'm not. I'm not Derek Wolf by any means. You know, like that guy's an you're absolute. Bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. I'm getting all kinds of compliments. You heard it here first, Derek. Uh, Sorry, bud. <laughs> but uh, you know, but I'm a little bit of girth in the in the shoulders. Mm-hmm. You know. And that's that's what makes me feel claustrophobic. I don't mind having the the taper down at the legs and the feet. I don't mind that it actually holds the warmth down there really well. Um, and my feet do get cold like yours more so when I sleep, not so much when I glass. But um, but that that shoulder width, man. Mm-hmm. I just and I'm a side sleeper too, and it's just so nice to have that. I don't feel constrained at all. Everybody and, that owns one of those says that that and they the like warmth, the size of it, and also the warmth is like. It's next level. Neville was also telling me, he's like, I've never, he, he told me this just the other day. I've never been cold in a stone glacier. Yeah. There, bag. there is something about the warmth on that. Like if you put, if you put that next to a, another 15 degree bag mm-hmm. that I'm telling you, the stone glacier is warmer and that's what I care about is sleeping warm. So I can actually deep sleep and sure. not, you know, not be worried about my body temperature dropping and wake me up. 
So you said you're going with the Uber Light? The Uber Light. Yeah. Which is the lightweight, low, no no R value. R Correct. value of 2.3. Yeah. Do you want to talk about our R value? Yeah. We, R get, val- we get asked quite a bit about our value. Yeah, R value is a very important thing when to, like looking at sleeping pads, but it's not just a you know, a sleeping pad measurement. It's used mm-hmm. all across in like science and other things too. It's like actual, you know, not just for backpackers. Uh, basically it's a measurement of the resistance the pad has to heat flow. So higher the R value, you know, those are gonna be for your later season hunts. Like in the winter, the lower the R value you can be used in the summer. Um, so basically it's gonna help you insulate yourself from the cold of the ground. And that helps with your sleeping bag actually, you know, the down doesn't get really compressed too because you're on a sleeping pad rather than on the ground. If you're on the ground, that cold is just you know, going right in the ground. Mm-hmm. So it's going to help insulate a little bit. Um, and this is why, though, I think a lot of people should take into account the R value of your sleeping pads. Because you can kind of do like a weight and R value ratio thing. You could have, you know, an Uber light, which is going to be super lightweight, but not a great R value. But then mm-hmm. maybe you have a zero degree sleeping bag. Mm-hmm. Or you could just do something that has a little more R value and get by probably with a 15 degree bag. And you might actually be warmer because you have a better pad system. Mm-hmm. I say that, but I don't follow it. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Are you Joe Biden? <laughs> no. No. Are you the next president? You're supposed to be complimenting. You, Trail was complimenting are you. Gavin you supposed to compliment are you Joe me. Biden? Who are you? President Brady Miller. President Brady Miller. So, so like, like I said. Get on the Iowa caucus. I'm here for rules you. Rules for thee, but not for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's Brady saying. So, like I said, you can use that. You know, I can, you can use a lower R value in the summer, a higher R value in the winter. Mm-hmm. but you have to spend more money. You know, those are going to be, you can't you have to have two setups basically then. Mm-hmm. For me, the, like I said, why I don't follow it, I don't fully care in a sense about our value of my sleeping pad because I always have a wood stove. I'm always going late season hunts. I have a teepee. But you're not keeping that wood burning stove all night. Nope. I'm not. Good point. Aha. Uh-huh. Again, <laughs> you guys always know what I will say next. I have all these other layers I already pack with me so I can just throw those on. Mm. and utilize those as well when I'm sleeping. So I always, for the longest time, you know, I ran the Uber light from early season hunts to all my late season hunts. I'm saving weight because it's lighter. I also don't get the long version. I get the, the regular version, which is too short for me. Yeah, you're psycho for that. Um, the later season, I will bring a good, fi- good wrapper, 15 degree chill coop <laughs> instead of rocking a zero. Because again, I do have that stove and I can, you know, crank on that stove, mill a knife. I want to wake up and, you know, stoke the stove again. But I say this too with the caveat that I can sleep on a rock and I can sleep very, very comfortable. You could definitely do that. I can fall asleep I've right now it. in two seconds if I wanted to. Like I can sleep anywhere and I That's can sleep validated. very comfortable. I will validate that. And Just I will sleep for a very yes. long time. Like mm-hmm. a very, very long time. You know that, Renzo. Oh, I know that. It's like I sleep very, very well in the mountains. So I am... A, so you're an outlier. I'm a very <laughs> much an outlier. So if you are going to go hunting, you should pay attention to the R value of your sleeping pad and then you know, have a good sleeping bag system as well. Cause it, essentially that's a kit. Both those things are, yeah. you know, yeah, they, they they're, they're married together. That's right? why yeah. I like the NXT cause it's yeah. well, 4.3 R value. So mm-hmm. essentially, I mean, that can take me into late October easy, you yeah. know, probably even November, no problem. Mm-hmm. That's what I'll be using in yeah, Canada is that with a zero degree. The only thing that I am giving up packing that on an early season, like August hunt is weight. Yep. So You're it's, looking it's at a little bit heavier, 12 and a half ounces to 8.8. Right. Yeah, I think the one, the long is one pound flat. Yeah. So yeah, like one regular. pound, and you can essentially use that from August till November. Yeah, that's a good way to save money is just have that one too, going yeah, through all the different it's seasons. It's the only one I have. I have two yeah. of them. I've had them. This yeah. is the newer version, so I should just touch on this real quick. One of the biggest complaints about the the <laughs> the Thermarest pads is that they're kind of noisy. Yeah. It's like, a, uh, it's like you're sleeping on a trash bag. Yeah, I used to say it sounded like a raccoon trying to get into a, a potato chip bag. It just was like, <laughs> it's that sound. If you can, I mean, that's what it is. You paint that picture. Yeah. Uh, this one apparently is quite a bit quieter. So mm. I haven't had a chance to use this one, but um, they're saying that was like the one thing that they tried to address, but the weight stayed the same. Yeah. I think it's a little more durable too. Yes, but and the I will compared to the Uber Light. Yeah, I recommend everybody the Thermarest Neo Air X Light. Yeah. Because it's durable. I've had one for yeah. eight years. Yeah, I've had mine for probably that same length of time, and I recently just popped my Uber Light. What were you doing? So now I have the X Light. I have my OG X Light, same one you do, the one that mm-hmm. sounds like a raccoon in a potato chip bag. Yeah. So I'm taking that one to Alaska just Good. because I don't want to spend more money on the Uber Light right now. Mm-hmm. I probably will later, but. <clears throat> You know, I got to pick and choose. Gotcha. Got tax and rebills coming so up. So do you have off the top of your head, like if you're going on a late hunt, 
what kind of R value are you looking at? Four plus five? five? Just, I just answered that. I, I know, but like for the layman, for most, most, yeah, most people. Yeah, you're probably looking at four, yeah. Okay. So like the chart is like one and two summer. I'm just going to look at it right now. Three season from three to four, all season four to six in extreme cold. Try to get that six plus if possible. Gotcha. But I think that one, you know, the X-Lite. Get you through most. Get you through most of the hunts, yeah. Maybe not one of those really late, late November hunts where mm. you're backpacking out, you don't have a stove. You probably want to look at something a little more burly for that. Get something with a little more insulation yeah. built into it. I had a guy ask me the other day, what is the most comfortable sleeping pad? Hmm. So I don't know. I mean, I, I started thinking about it, looking through. I know Sea to Summit makes uh, a one. It's a four inch thick. It's not that much heavier than this one, to be honest. But it's, I mean, that's thick. Four inches. Yeah. This one's two and a half. Uh, I know I've heard people say that the climate, they like just the shape of the chambers and the climate sleeping mm -hmm. or pads, especially for side sleepers. What about um, the AXL, Big Agnes? Yeah, Big Agnes. Those are also three, three and a half inches thick. Mm -hmm. So you're getting a little bit of extra lift in those. Um, so I've never, I don't know. I, I'm kind of like you. I sleep pretty decent in the backcountry. Is anyone nowadays using the old roll-up foldable? I don't like, know. You know, sleeping pads? Probably. Cause like that's what you should use back in the day to save weight. But right now you're yep. really not like the materials mm -hmm. are getting so much better that you're not actually saving that much yeah. weight by going over to that. Do you carry a patch kit for these? I do carry a patch kit. You? Oh yeah. Patch yeah, kit. Definitely. You have to. It's weighs not, I mean, it weighs nothing and yeah. it's going to save you. A little cell poly and mm -hmm. you know, a yeah. poly patch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the only time I've ever had a uh, pads kind of lose air. Sometimes a valve starts to kind of get faulty after mm -hmm. a lot of hunts. I had one one time that for some reason, whatever it was, it's probably just over years of use of folding it up. Uh, it kind of creased and it opened up a little bit of a gap about yay long. I used some sill poly, just, you know, not sill poly. What am I uh, talking? Sill net, just a little mm -hmm. silicone gel mm. and spread that pretty even. It's still holding now. Like I just used it this really? weekend. Yeah. Mm, damn. Yeah. Six years later, it's still holding just that, that little sill yeah. silicone bead. What but do you look for in our value? Uh, that one four. That one four. Yeah, four. I think four. four. No matter what. Yeah, no matter what, because like I said, I can use that early season. I'm only giving up maybe, you know, a few ounces. Five. You worried about me on the Uber light then on um, go, with a 15 degree bag? No, I'm not worried. But about I have you. it inside the bivy. Is what yeah, I'm. Yeah, you're gonna be fine. Yeah, I'll be. Yeah, you'll be totally okay. I think if you got if you got the you know the change to you know the coin to buy multiple sleeping mm -hmm. pads, I think you ought to. Why not? Yeah. I mean, different different uses, different seasons. I think it makes the yeah. best sense. But I think if you're going to buy one for durability and a good R value that can get you from early to late, I think buy that one. Mm -hmm. That's I, I recommend that to everybody. I don't know how many times I've recommended that. Yeah, it's pad. probably one of the best top sellers that we if, have. Yeah, and if you look at reviews, gear reviews across the board, whether you know we've done it or some other company's done it, um, it always gets ranked high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you using for a bag? Uh, I want to jump back to this. Okay. Ground sheet. Oh, yeah. Good call. You rocking a ground sheet all the time? Uh, Even in a bivy? Or no. Because you can shove everything inside of it? Yeah, if I carry a bivy, I'm not using a ground sheet. So I've been using that uh, Bavanarak, Hilleberg mm. Bavanarak. My Scarecrow? It's my, de yeah, my Dementor costume. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the thing I like about it is it's just big enough. I can throw my pad and my bag inside it. And I like the fact that the foot box is closable. So it breathes pretty well if i open that thing up i don't get any condensation in it mm -hmm. it's got sleeves got a hood if i want to pull that th and i did this weekend i can pull that thing over the top of me and my backpack you know even if i'm walking and mm -hmm. kind of hike it up just for a little bit of added weather protection so um i will carry a ground sheet if i'm not carrying it so like if i'm using just a tarp and i want to go really light like a piece of tyvek you yeah. or polycryo mm -hmm. polycryo is really nice but you have to replace that yeah really pretty often, often. yeah yeah, it's multi-use though. Like poly polycryo, it's just window sealer mm -hmm. sheet. And you can buy it at like your Home Depot or your Ace Hardware. And then you can get it actually in different thicknesses. Mm. You can cut those sheets. And I've used it a bunch of times just to lay meat out on to bone out, which is kind of nice because it keeps the meat clean. Yep. You? Uh, I was told I can mention this. Okay. I am using a prototype Go Hunt I was ground sheet. Just going to say, we're big Tybeck people. Mm -hmm. So here. yeah, a couple of guys in the office have been testing it out on some hunts. It'll be my first time using it on a hunt. So I'm going to take it to Alaska and test it out and see if it meets up to our standards because we like to test everything and then go hunt gear shop. So whatever long go hunt Tyvek ground sheet coming out. Super to, lightweight. It kind of hits the specs I'm kind of looking at, you know? Yeah. To that, I would, I would never recommend that you just throw your sleeping pad on the ground. Yeah. 
Like no. you're asking for holes. Yeah. And nothing can ruin. <laughs> I mean, ask Neville. You head out into the back country and you climb into your, your bivy or your tent the first night and you pop your sleeping pad. And, and just, then you're just on the ground. And then you're just on the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not good. And it's even the same thing too, like running a teepee set up like a lot of times you're setting up on snow or you're trying mm-hmm. to clear the snow away. Now you have a little bit of wet ground on the bottom. So it's nice to throw the tie back down, throw your sleeping pad and throw your sleeping yep. bag on there, keep things kind of clean and also not pop the pad. That's gotcha. a big thing. It's a pretty sweet little Tyvek. Yeah. Uh, really lightweight yeah. too. Can't it's, remember the exact. Um, it's super light. Super I can't light. remember. Uh, I can't remember. Either. And it's big enough. Yeah. That was one thing that we thought about. Yeah, it's it, plenty big. Yeah. It's yeah we wide, tried to, we tried to do really narrow at first. And we're like, eh, guys Should, are going to roll around, you mm-hmm. know, sleeping at night. You make it a little bit wider. Definitely do the length wise for a tall guy like me. And mm-hmm. 2.9 ounces. 2.9. Nice. You heard it here first. It's a sweet little deal. What are you using for a sleeping bag? Uh, chill coot 15. 15? Yep. Quilt ever? Yeah. I Summer, I use quilt all the time. Do you like it? Yeah. I use the Western Mountaineering Astrolite. It's got an older it. one. Do it's you like, sleep good in it? Honestly, I do. I never do in a quilt. I've got a quilt. I've got an Enlightened Equipment Enigma, which mm-hmm. is a, I had it over stuff, so it's 10 degree, even though I don't think you can get a, a quilt to 10 degree. Yeah. You can't sleep that warm ever yeah. in a quilt. You just lose too much body heat. But I never sleep that good in it. Are you always like on the straps and on the buckles? Or are you I putting, your, feel, pad, are you putting your pad inside there? Yeah. You- yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm using it like you'd use a quilt. It's got the straps that go underneath it, you know? Yeah. Um I just, it feels breezy to me always. I yeah, just, I want to be able to sleep like the that. The only thing I wish at a quilt, they had a, like a mummy hood. I'm always wearing like a little beanie at night then or putting my hoods on my shirt sure. up on top. But you remember when we went on that. Uh, they do have those. It's called a sleeping bag. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of one of those. <laughs> yeah. But you remember that elk hunt you and I did with uh, mm-hmm. Born and Raised. And yeah. And uh, I took that same quilt and I actually did get cold a couple of nights because we had woke up to some frost because that's only a 27 degree quilt. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, it's really lightweight, and I like the volume it takes up in my backpack. It's pretty small. I can I would, take a compression sack, and I can crunch that thing down. In regards to sleep systems, would you sacri- would you sacrifice weight for sleep or yeah. take sleep over weight? Do you see what I'm saying? Sleep over weight Me all day too. long. Me too. I would rather pack extra weight no. and sleep good. Sleep, I, would, I, would, yeah. I would rather make my food as quick as I can at night, do stoveless method, go to bed sooner, get more hours. But, and have but a if you're not setup. comfortable, you're but not, not getting comfortable. But I am comfortable, though, because like I said, I'm a very right. weird use case. I can sleep anywhere. That's I true. literally can. All right. So if you can sleep anywhere, go light. Yeah. Like we've had <laughs> we've had bears come in at our camp and runs like, you're that bear last night? I'm like, nope. I was out <laughs> like a rock. True story. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm a very light sleeper. I don't have an issue sleeping. I just I'm a light sleeper. Yeah. So anything to just keep me a little bit more comfortable from waking up every hour. Pillow? Either of you? No. So, no pillow? No. I, no way. Use, I used to use a pillow all the time, but I was told it, it, it squirts out. Always. <laughs> Put it in the hood of your sleeping bag. I think, well, that, well, no, here, but here's the thing. You know the sleeping here's, bag? Yeah, here's the thing, though. Like, <laughs> even on the chill coot, since I'm, you know, 6'5", mm-hmm. I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm almost maxed out, so I don't have a lot of room up there to put a pillow. Right. So it's, it's awkward for me to do a pillow, so I just, you know, wrap my down jacket up mm-hmm. and make a little ball of it and go to sleep on it. And I usually end up sleeping on my arm a lot, too, with the... What do you have? To, what if you have to wear your down jacket because it's freezing? Then I'll just yeah, no no go to bed with my head just laying flat. Okay, like, I've, I've done it. Point so, being, Brady can sleep well. Yeah. No I, pillow. I, no, I have the same issue. The pillow squirts out everywhere. It just drives me nuts. Oh well. They they got to figure out a, a system there. They got to figure out a thing. Mine works I great. I just have a C to some arrow light arrow arrow light. It's just the little little guy arrows. I think it's called. Yeah. And it's shape of your neck, your head. It's kind of half moon shape. Fits right in the hood of your sleeping bag. You talking about an airplane? No, neck, not, neck no, pillow. No, not a neck pillow. It's a regular. It's a pillow. It's, I don't know, it's man. Round at the top and the bottom. Velcro on one side. Just uh, put a little silicone gel on one side of it. That'd keep it keep it in place. Yeah, man. It's just it's always a pain in the ass. They always. I always use it like if I'm everywhere. a side sleeper. It's just perfect height. I am a side sleeper. That thing's one point five nine ounces. Do you, do you still carry a million dry bags, Lorenzo? No. Okay. You don't? That's old Lorenzo. You use, yeah, old Lorenzo used carry a lot of dry bags. You could, you could just shove your down jacket in a dry bag and boom, you have a pillow. That's old. Yeah, I've done that too. That's young Lorenzo. You I'm a totally labeled. different person now. Just shove it in there like I do. Yeah. Yep. But an actual pillow isn't that much heavier than a dry bag. It's actually probably lighter, to be honest. Well, I don't carry the dry bag <laughs> anymore, <laughs> anymore, but back I in the know. day, yeah. All right, so no pillow. All right, no, fine. No pillow. 
yeah, I carry. I'll try. I'll hard. try it out on Thursday Stay night. Hard. I'll try it again on Thursday night. How about that? And I'll see if it mm-hmm. see how that goes. It'll squirt out. Uh, it's it's gonna squirt out. Let's. Uh, what about synthetic versus down? You ever use synthetic sleeping bag? Would you ever you take one? Or are you pretty much down only? Pretty much down only. You too. Never really thought about it. Yeah. Honestly, never really thought about it. The, as soon as I found the stone glacier bag, like that was it. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if I would ever change now. I know a lot of guys going to Alaska. I get questions. People are looking for a synthetic. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I, in my opinion, I think it down, it's lighter, it sleeps warmer. You just got to keep the thing dry. Yeah. So you just got to have some shelter. You got to have a pack yeah. cover, whatever it is, to keep that thing dry. But once once it's dry, I mean, if you keep it dry, it sleeps great. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. That's where a bivy comes in. That's where a bivy comes in. Bivy's nice. You ever, you uh, no trouble sleeping in a bivy? No, no issues. Do you sleep head out, hoop, hoop over your head? Yeah, I'll, I, typically I'll have like the the back of it all the way up, mm-hmm. top of my head, and then the front of it kind of pulled down below my Near nipples. Chest. Yeah, mm-hmm. like right out my chest and just kind of sleep like that. What are you using for shelter, tarp? Yeah, the, the Stone Glacier 10 L okay. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's a multi, multi-use thing anyways. That's kind of like if we do get trapped up in that high elevation in a rainstorm, I can throw that up and at least all three of us can kind of. Huddle have under a little it. powwow and huddle under it and i'm probably gonna make omar carry that anyways young omar mm-hmm. he's you know he's he you got, he got to be thrown into the fire at some mm-hmm. point so like he'll be carrying that and that's more of uh you know if it just straight up downpours i'll sleep under that um him and the cameraman will be they they're bringing tents in i can't stand sleeping in a tent after i've done the mm-hmm. whole bibby thing in the high country well, I, I know i mentioned it a lot but i always was really blown away by like when trail and i did the archery hunt back in the deck i was around you know doing the whole like headlamp leaning mm-hmm. over trying to find the flat spot and look over and trails already like in his baby sack yeah. sleeping it's the easiest time to find a flat spot <laughs> sets it out it's the best boom, he's done it's the best i think brady liked that because i was in bed sooner than he was yeah. i think that bugged him <laughs> <laughs> it did bug him i can tell <laughs> he's like look no, at that and then the other thing there. too is like being in those big burns man yeah. you can you can just get nice and cuddled between two two logs, two logs and you got nothing to worry about In case a big leaner comes yeah. over on you in the nighttime <laughs> just sleep so sound knowing that you're you're good yeah. and it's quick then to pack up for running and gunning oh it's gunning. insanely quick yeah you said you're going to take the tiger wall too to, uh, that, to canada yeah yeah yep that thing's so light. Uh, that's why, yeah. I don't want to add too much weight. Sure. And that's so I'm just bringing For that. For a two-man tent with double wall, I mean, yeah. it is light. And I think, I mean, there's more there's more durable tents on the market, you know, for like you get into like real third, fourth season stuff where you might be dealing with some snow load. But if you're not anticipating a lot of snow load and you're looking for light and fast and space and just protection, that Tiger Wall too is a sweet tent. I'm not planning on having a bunch of snow. Otherwise, I'm not bow hunting. Yeah. Yeah. What are you using in Alaska? The Peak Solitude. You got your own? I got my my own, yeah. So you got your own little little den you can go into? My own little castle. Stove? Yep. Taking the U-turn. Seek outside stove. Seven seven and a half foot pipe. Um, What do I got? Uh, Hyperlite Mountain Gear Steaks. Mm Mm-hmm. Just a killer setup. Love the cross trek stabilization of the peak shelter. It can you know dry out gear up on top. Hey my hey my socks. Mm-hmm. Adds a little bit of stability. Adds talk, a little bit of headroom. Talk about the cross stabilization because I don't think there's a lot of people that actually know that. Yeah, that's a really cool feature. Like most teepees are, just a teepee. You know? Single pole. Single pole going up and then guy outs and guy outs. Yep. So what's really great about the cross trek stabilization? Like you're hiking in with your trekking poles already. Mm-hmm. You know, so once you get there, a lot of times I don't even use my trekking poles for the rest of the time hunting. Maybe I'll take one or whatever. But now with the cross trek, so you have basically four loops on the top, two for each pole, and you have to take a little little rubber cap of your trekking pole, otherwise you'll poke through the sidewall. But it has these little like basically sleeves and loops where you can put your trekking pole in there and then you extend your trekking pole out and then clasp your trekking pole together. So it's gonna add a little bit of headroom on top. And then you do the other one the opposite way, and it still goes around your uh, stovepipe. It's not going to get in the way of the stovepipe all, at all. And like, it's like up. creating a cross beam in your tent, mm-hmm. like yep. rafters. So, so when you get those wind storms, like teepees mm-hmm. are very high profile, so it's going to add some stability there. It's going to add some headroom. But the biggest benefit to me is hanging your clothes up. So once I get that stove rocking, all my wet gear gets hung up, and by the morning when I wake up, you know it's dry because while I'm making food or whatever, doing my little camp chores, like getting other pieces of wood, mm-hmm. that stove is rocking and drying all my gear out. And so I've hung boots up there. Like I said, socks. Um, this kind of defeats the, or is a, before you'd always have to hang, you know, cordage on the top and dry your stuff up. But it adds that little bit extra headroom. Stability is a big thing. It's going to be big for you. I can tell you that already. Like the ability to dry your clothing out, 
you know, night after night is a big deal in moose camp. Yeah. Like hanging your socks up and over, you know, starting your fire, get your stove going, really dry out your shirts, you know, your socks, your boots, even making that thing Africa hot. Yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> it really is like that. That time I went to Alaska and hunted moose, like that was the biggest help at night mm-hmm. was just the ability to like get in there, start a fire, kind of recoup, cook your meal and then dry out your clothes day yeah. in, day out. It's one of those things too. You think about it. It's like, why didn't no one else try that out before? Like, yeah, thought of that, but it's a really cool thing about it. Like, yeah, it does, you know, it's maybe weighs a little bit heavier than, you know, my seek outside Dyneema, mm-hmm. um, Cimarron. And, uh, but I just love that, that little extra feature, you know, mm-hmm. that feature does, like I said, make it, it could be a game changer in the hunt when you have to dry your clothes out. Yeah. And it also has some really good guy lines too on the side. So actually going to add a little bit, a little bit of extra livable space on the bottom, yep. even though I'm just by myself. So I don't I have plenty of room in, in that shelter by myself, but they're uh, watching movies, just me and they're watching movies. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. I'm pretty similar to Lorenzo. I'm going light and fast. elk hunting. you know, I've kind of done it that way for a long time. So mine's Bibby. So the Vanner, the Vanner uh, and then shelter, is just a basic tarp. So I've got a seek outside EOS that I've been using, which is a, a piece of pulp, not polycryo. Um, give me the name. So poly? Dyneema. Oh, Dyneema. It's Dyneema. Yeah, I've got the Dyneema one, so it's it's light. And then, you know, I don't know if we're supposed to leak this or not too, but we've also got a, a new tarp potentially. You heard it here first. I'll be playing with. Big enough I can camp under it. Because you're giving out all the secrets. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So that's what I'm using. Do you want to jump down to Camp Kitchen? Yeah. Well, I want to ask or you a question though first. Yeah. Um, tarp in Alaska. Uh, no. <laughs> you mean for glassing? Yeah, glassing. Yeah, I'm gonna take my. I'm gonna take my. I'm DS- like for camping. Hard no. No, no. Like, I'm taking my DST Dyneema. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, and I think it, it makes great sense. I know that when we were up there, uh, it was great for glassing, and then it was also great for just pitching over the top of your meat cache. Mm. To just shed rain because it rained all the time. So you didn't want your meat constantly wet, yeah. you know, hanging out there. So, yeah, we would pitch it just in a no one simple wants A-frame. Meat. Yeah, nobody likes wet meat. <laughs> but, yeah, we just pitch that over the top of the meat cache and keep all the rain off. So I would say, yeah, for sure, take one. And that's yeah. a, that'd, that'd be enough for all the moose meat, just having one. And you could probably just share it with a bunch of mm-hmm. with a bunch of other guys I'm going with. Yeah, either Brian. a 10 by 12 or an 8 by 10. Yeah. Probably 10 by 12 if you got one. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah, I would take one for sure. Okay. I already have it in my list. I just want to confirm with the yep. expert. Yeah, and it makes it's great for glassing too. Yeah, just pitch it and sit underneath it in glass mm-hmm. or what, call. <laughs> what was your other question that we're going to jump into? Uh, camp kitchen. Camp kitchen. You ready for camp kitchen? Yeah, camp kitchen. What do you got for camp kitchen, Lorenzo? Not much. <laughs> you don't need much. Not you're much. Not, you're not cooking pesto. No, I, I got uh, the go hunt mug. Yeah, which we've, we've got one. Yeah, super, super light. It's actually a pretty, pretty badass little mug we designed, Kevin designed. Um, so I'm taking that. I, I love having coffee in the backcountry. Do you? It's, like, it's just, yeah, nothing like, you know, a slower afternoon or setting up on a on a wallow with a little hot cup of coffee, whatever it is. There's just something about having coffee in the backcountry I mm-hmm. love. Um, romantic. What would you say? In it's the, romantic. Or, romantic. Romanticized. That's, yeah, mm-hmm. that's what it is for me. Um, so I got to bring that, and then I'm, I brought the uh, MSR Pocket Rocket too, yep. and then one of the little four ounce MSR propane tanks. One question I get asked quite a bit is like, how many days can you get out of a four ounce propane tank? Um, if you're doing coffee, I would say like maybe five, yep. maybe four. You know, I think if you're just boiling water once a day, like at night, you could probably get eight to ten. Yep, I'd agree with that. Yep, it's kind of where I landed. Unless you're Omar and you start a giant flame ball yeah. debacle. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Omar. Yeah, we've got one. These little Go Hunt titanium mugs are pretty sick. They are nice. Titanium's got the lid that fits tight. Everything fits inside it, including you know a fuel canister. Uh, if you took this out of here, it would fit yeah, inside yeah. it with it. You got the little rubber grips on the handle. Did you mention? Yeah, that? the little rubber grips are pretty handy. That's I know a, the, that's for the coffee drinkers. Yeah, that's what it's for, man. That's yeah. for us. It, it's also just nice, like once you boil your water. I know a lot of these people that make these titanium mugs. They don't have these little silicone handles, mm-hmm. and you got essentially you got to wait or wear gloves to pour your water. This mm-hmm. is just kind of nice because you can pick it up and pour it anytime you want. Yeah. But yeah, those are pretty handy. And it has the markings in there too, so you know, the ounces of water. Yep. But the only reason I'm bringing that is for coffee. That whole setup right there. The yep. only thing I'm cooking is coffee. You're not eating any mountain meals no. at night. He's no? going stoveless. No. Well, he's going stoveless. not, but he's not. <laughs> I, I'm. You're bringing I'm, a stove for I'm coffee. I'm going stoveless, but I'm bringing a stove for coffee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm. 
I'm sick of uh, the stomach issues. Now my older age, I'm just done fighting it. I don't even want to think about it. Don't want to worry about it. Um, and now this this season, I've had a lot of time, obviously going down with the surgery and all that shit. I've mm -hmm. had a lot of time to think about it. So I've developed, I, I have my full macros, everything of exactly what I want. And it's all stoveless. Put a lot of time and effort into it. So I'm, I'm good to go now. I'll be interested to talk to you after the season, like if yeah. you're still committed to it. I will be. Really? Oh, yeah. Because I know I've been with guys that have gone still with us, and they look at everybody else sitting around camp eating a hot meal, and they're like, ah, oh, man, hot meal looks kind of good. That yeah. is a hard, that's the hardest part. That's why solo yep. stove list is actually really doable, but when you see someone else. A group it, eating a hot meal, they're like eating beef stroke. But you guys don't have the thought of your stomach the next day. Yeah, I can that's see a, that. That's a real easy pass for me when I just think about, well, at least I'm not stuck behind a tree tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Sure. Do, do you remember our, one of our last conversations where we talked about uh, coffee chew? Yeah. I do but what about that. doing some of that instead of taking the hot coffee? I, there's just, I don't know. There's do, something romantic, romantic little, about it. Little chew packets? There's something coffee? romantic about it. And here, look, here's the thing. It is, where am I at here? It is 11 ounces for me to have coffee. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that. And you'll have water. So it's not like oh, there's water everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. So I mean, eleven ounces to just have coffee every every so often sounds fantastic. Yeah, little pocket rocket too is a nice stove. It is nice. It's really nice. Yep. What do you use, Brady? Stove, jet boil. I, I'm using the Go Hunt titanium mug. Mm -hmm. Switching over to that. Going to try that out. Um, for stove, I'm using the BRS 3000 T. It's a 0.89 ounce stove. Pocket rocket's such a better name. I know. <laughs> I've had this one for a long time, back when uh, Rudder Lacura was a thing. I actually purchased uh, from them. So uh, it's just like one of my Psycho Ultralight things I used to use way back in the day when I was trying to cut as many ounces as I can. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to use that. It actually fits the pot really, really well. I've been testing it out um, at home and on some scouting trips this summer. Go hunt titanium spork. Oh, yeah. Spork? No spork, spork or spoon. You don't even need one. Don't need one. Doesn't oh, need one. I, what do you like, spork or spoon? I like spork. Yeah, you got to have a spork, yeah, right? Yeah, no spoons. Yeah, what if you have to have some, you know, back straps? You have to stab that little back strap and eat it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you get some of those like grilled chicken ones. You know, you gotta break the chicken apart. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I gotta have a spork, <laughs> titanium yeah. spork. So that's pretty much my setup. And unless you're trail and you fly with isobutane, because mm -hmm. he's a rebel. Yep. Somehow trail's never gotten caught. Never, not once. And <laughs> never, I'm just never once. gonna risk it. So I have to. I already called up to Alaska. If you're scared, just and, say you're uh, scared. Yeah, <laughs> I'm scared. What's the I don't want to. I don't scared, want them to, to take church. that out, yeah. and then all of a sudden start taking uh, some my other stuff out. So I actually called up to the last little place we're going to in Alaska and uh, reserved a bunch of fuel canisters. Yeah, ahead of time so I can pick those up because I can't fly with them. Yep. And then I also reserved some uh, little fuel stick canister things for uh, my thermocell mm -hmm. for the thermocell for Skeeter Skeeters. I'm a little scared of them. A little scared of them. Dude, sometimes they are really bad. No, yeah. I don't want to scare you. Are you even taking more, a head net? Yeah, I got a head net as well. That's a good idea. Yep. Yeah, I'm similar to Lorenzo. Just go hunt titanium pot, uh, four ounce MSR uh, butane, and then isobutane, right? Isobutane, and then, whatever yeah. it is. And then uh, the Windmaster Soto Windmaster stuff, which I've been using for a really long time. Yeah, you you have been using that for a long time. Pretty basic, yeah. It's like one of those things. If it ain't broke, don't don't fix it. Fix it. Yep. 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 Have you ever? Uh, and then go hunt titanium spork. Because you're not stoveless. No, I'm not. I like a hot meal. I like those <laughs> na weird gut feelings, you know, in the middle of the Gross. night. Gross. <laughs> if I ever what? Use one of the foot fuels. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, using combined fuel. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, if you guys don't have one of those, you should get one. Because I've, I've probably got 30 pots of yep. isobutane sitting around in my equipment room. And it's just a little valve, essentially, that goes between two different pots that you can combine the fuel into one. So yeah so before the, my uh, spring bear hunt this year mm -hmm. i was looking back like you said we you always have those fuel canisters where you think you you know oh you shake it like or you weigh it out like i do because i can figure out exactly what it is and like man i could probably get like three nights out of that but it's not enough for me to take that whole weight of the yep. can into the, in the mountains so you buy a new can and all of a sudden you get down to that same point again where you have one or two nights mm -hmm. left and you have another can like i look back i had some cans from 2004 wow still at my house you're a hoarder you are a hoarder. I'm just, I like saving money so I can spend it on so you're a hoarder. taxidermy. 
<laughs> you guys know that? Yeah, those are handy. And they're not that expensive. How much are they? 25 bucks, something like that? Yeah. You can combine Maybe 30. fuel. Yeah, totally worth it. So I went through a bunch of my fuel canisters before the spring bear hunt and converted them all, like, you know, made them full. And game changer. It's one of those things where mm-hmm. I'm like, why? I've been saving all these cans forever. Kind of use them on some, like, truck camping excursions and try to burn them up. But I'm like, well, now I got full cans everywhere again. Yep. Gotcha. Do you know anyone who takes the big giant isobutane? Uh, I have. Like if I'm doing 10 days and if I'm going to do coffee and meal, I'll yeah. just take one of those instead of two small ones. But yeah, I, I've done it. The eight mm. ounces. Mm-hmm. If I'm doing They're just cheaper. coffee, how many do you think I'd get out of that? If you're doing just coffee, um, I think you do 10 days pretty slick. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yep. Yeah, I think you'd be a okay. And they're light and they're small and they fit inside that canister. And I don't go nice. to boil either. I just like a warm coffee. I don't yeah. like the I don't Summer. like the pipe and hot coffee. So you like drinking that Giardia? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which we should jump into water. Speaking of Giardia. Speaking yeah. of Giardia, we have uh, a steri pen. Steri pen on the table. Look at your steri pen. My backcountry your lightsaber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be cooler, right, if it projected a light and you and your yeah, buddies yeah. could have sword fights at night. <laughs> <laughs> I really hate that it lights up if you put it in water. No sword fights with your buddy. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Lightsaber fights? No? No. That's the, the Steripen Classic 3. Yep. And where I'm going is running water. I talked to you about this, mm-hmm. too. I asked Trail, what do you, just his thoughts on it. I mean, clear running water pretty much everywhere. I'm going in New Mexico and then obviously in Canada. Um, Canada, I probably won't do anything but at least in new mexico i'll just hit Whoa. 90 seconds and have, i'm off and running have you had giardia it is the worst my, experience of my life you when should, i went on my dad's doll sheep hunt in 2010 he got giardia just you hearing you say you're not gonna do anything just gives me the shivers in Canada, you're not doing anything i huh? just drink it right out of the mouth. i mean i've been super fortunate to be up there quite mm-hmm. a few times and i've never treated water sure. i've worked in british columbia i've worked in montana i've hunted in british columbia that shit scares me. Hey, if it ain't broke, <laughs> don't fix it, man. Why don't you talk talk about purification versus filtering? Because I don't know how many people I get. I get, people ask me a lot. Oh, do you, do I need a water filter? And I'm like, well, I, I mean, a filter and a pur- purifier, two different two things. Two different things. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, a, a filter is obviously going to filter out, you know, silt and shit. silt particles, all that stuff. You're not drinking it. Where and and some stuff. Yeah, like they say, whatever the percentage is, it's mm-hmm. going to filter out. Um, it's not going to filter out like for the most part, like things that could cause diseases. I do believe I'm saying this correctly, like some sorts of uh, other bacteria can go right in there because they're a lot smaller. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have, you know, iodine mm-hmm. tablets you could use, which is going to give your water a nasty flavor. It's going to mm-hmm. taint uh, your water bladders a different color. It'll end up being like this yellowish. Iodine color? Yeah, iodine color. Like when you were a kid and you'd put iodine or whatever it was. Yeah. To, yeah. yeah. Or we have like Aquamira drops. So you have the part A or part B, which is a really sweet system as well. Mm-hmm. Seven drops of part A, seven drops of part B, wait seven minutes. You know, if it's colder, you gotta wait a little bit longer and then you mm-hmm. put it in one liter of water and then you have to wait a certain amount of time. So mm-hmm. it's a little bit slower. Whereas, you know, filters are instantaneous. You can, they're really nice if you have a small little puddle of water where you can't dump, take an analogy and scoop it or whatever. A pond. And yeah, you can just filter. El yeah, an El Qualo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I used to use filters all the time, but that's how I got Giardia. Yeah. You need a purifier. Yeah. Yeah, you got to purify. You can't just filter. Yeah. When you're in that real nasty water. And you it was just... nasty water at a, a guy I was with who filtered it in a moose pond that we just saw a bunch of moose walking around and obviously shitting in the pond. And so <laughs> all the silt was like kicked all up. So it was silt everywhere. So it, it clogged, like it, clogged the filter instantly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the thing, and, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, so I, like I said, I used to use a filter and then I switched over to completely, um, you know, Aquamira drops, mm-hmm. which I still bring those as a backup. Mm-hmm. And then uh, for the longest time, I was really anti steripen because I didn't believe in it. I was like, oh, is this UV light, lightsaber actually going to do something? Mm-hmm. But over time, I've kind of you know done, done a lot of research and looked into it. And now I use a steripen, the ultralight one all the time. Yep. Yep. Thing I tell people is like, if you're f- pulling from standing water, Filter and mm-hmm. purify. So filter it with some sort of filter, a pump, and then purify with like Aquamira drops or something like that just for safeguard. Because like I said, yeah. if you get sick, you're hating life. You're toast. Yeah. And then if you got good running water, clear water, just purify like yeah. SteriPen or Aquamira drops. And Aquamira doesn't have a, a taste at all, no. which is really nice. Yeah. And that's kind of what I use. I use Aquamira drops or a SteriPen, either or. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm bringing drops too. Just they backup. weigh nothing. Yeah. Just as yeah. backup. Mm-hmm. The thing is, too, if you do get some bad water up there, it's not really going to hit you for seven days. Yeah, that's I think true. That's You'd average. be home. 
I'll be home. You have a big sheep on your pack. You'll be home. I'll be home. So, I won't even care. And then it'll hit you in Seattle Airport. Oh, I would definitely <laughs> care. Could you imagine being on a plane? And, oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. Don't, don't. Come on. That's yeah. a future the, podcast. The, the stories I could tell about my Jardy experience. My gosh. Brady it's, finally peed on a plane. Did you know that? Finally peed on a yeah, plane? Yeah, he's never peed on Remember a plane. Remember the Tajikistan podcast? I had, yeah. We joked about like traveling whatever it was 13 hours yeah, in a plane. He never beers, had and never, and I never, an beer and Brady's stuff like that. never used an airplane bathroom until recently. Until recently coming back from uh, checked it off his list. The Sika Depot when I gave a seminar up there I had to go to the bathroom so bad. I was so nervous getting up. I was like <laughs> I look at the, you know, the little screen in front of you on the plane. I was like an hour and 45 minutes till we land in Vegas. I am not going to make it. And I was trying to distract myself like working on my computer. I tried to watch some videos on my computer, listen to some music. I'm like I have to go to the bathroom. I Are felt so bad because I was in the window seat. So I hate disturbing people, even though I've been that person before where someone's in the window seat and I have to get up and I don't care then. Yeah. But I just hate disturbing someone who might be sleeping or they're really comfortable. And I had to get really up. Really comfortable on a plane. That is not, that doesn't happen. I was so nervous. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. I was like, do I go to the, the middle bathroom? Do I go to the back bathroom? So I went all the way to the back and I was like, is this the bathroom? I'd ask the flight attendant. And like, yeah, that's the bathroom. <laughs> I had to figure out how to open the door. I had to figure out how to lock it. I got inside there. I was like, whoa. I just love that he said he was so nervous. Right when I got Are inside. Are you so proud of yourself now? Well, I, kind, I kind of am, but I was like, I'm, what am I, 37 years old? Yeah. And, and you just used just an airplane used bathroom. You did, bathroom. You, Brady. Did it, Brady. you did it, buddy. I did it. Checked it off your list. Yeah. Good job. Anyway, sorry I had to bring that up. <laughs> So um, now when I go to Alaska, mm-hmm. I'm going to be like that guy. I like, I know how to do this. You guys have questions? Come ask me. <laughs> yeah. You don't want beaver uh, fever in Alaska, by the ooh. way, so make sure you treat your water. Yeah. Yep. Good deal. Um, bottles, soft bottles. Use water bottles, soft bottles, like Hydropack or uh, like Platypus or using hard-sided Nalgene bottles. What are you using and why? I have the uh, Go Hunt Ultralight Nalgene. Like that one right here? Yep, but I have the 32-ounce uh, one oh, liter one. sorry about that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Look at all that extra weight you're carrying around. And I know. You only have, what, eight extra ounces hydrated. in there? <laughs> you're just hydrated. so extra hydrated. I'm super extra hydrated. But yeah, I got the 48-ounce the forty-eight ounces. Yeah. So I used to be the person who uh, carried a platypus three-liter bladder, but mm-hmm. I've gone away from it. Mm-hmm. Totally gone away you? from it. I'm doing two Ultralight 32s, Go Hunt Ultralight Nalgene's. Gotcha. And then I'll I'll pack a six liter drum light, mm-hmm. the old school one. I sell yep. the old old ones, but the new ones are just as good. But I have a bunch of the old ones, so I have that in my backpack. I'll fold it up so I do get it to a water source. I'll fill six liters up, and then I'll have a one liter um, one of those little foldable soft platypus. bottles. Soft bottles, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I've got these. Of, so I've got two of these forty eight ounces, the big ones. I'll probably just pack one forty eight ouncer, and then I've got a hydro pack uh, storage. Essentially, it's collapsible. How do you like the hydro pack? Nice. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Hydropack makes nice stuff, but um, it's a four liter one. So I can just either, you know, throw that up at camp or, you know, fill it up as time yeah. permits. Why have you found yourself go away from the the bladders? I just never really found a good place to put it in my backpack, to be honest. And then the hoses what are always kind of getting in the way. The no, sleeve that's <laughs> built for it. I always have so much as gear randomly in there. The yeah. 115, the BTX, sure. you know. Uh, no, it does take up space. I try to put my, you know, my... Uh, my titanium stove for my TP inside mm-hmm. my pack. I don't want to strap it on the outside my yeah. pack. I try to protect it a little bit. So I'm taking up a lot of room in there. I know Lorenzo used to co- carry his between the top lid and the top mm-hmm. of the pack. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was, that was a good spot too. Mm-hmm. Um, I've also seen, right uh, shout out Mather on hunts where we were hiking around and all of a sudden the bottom hose comes disconnected inside mm-hmm. his backpack and yeah. completely soaks every piece of clothes, That's sleeping I bag. I had two of them. It's yes. a scary thought process when you're on like a hunt where one, water's a hard commodity to get mm-hmm. and it might be cold out and I just drenched all your gear. That's what I don't like. And yeah. they freeze all the time. So I'm always, I used to run the little uh, sleeves around the hose, mm-hmm. blowing the water back in so the water doesn't freeze up on you. But it's like, yeah, it's handy. You can drink water all the time, but you know, I just picked up a Stone Glacier Hydra holster. So it's right on the side of my body. And then what the... Uh, have you tried oh. the hard side hydration? No, Either I haven't. You? No, I haven't. It's essentially a hose that works with one of these yeah. algae bottles. So if you want to drink as you're going, it works just the exact same as like a bladder hose. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah. I might try one of those and just that run, does sound pretty good. run it underneath my arm and run that in the side pocket, the stretchy yeah. pocket of my pack. I've never had an issue with a bladder, but I've heard so many horror stories now. It's yeah. like, I feel like it's only a matter of time. So I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm out. It I is the best the way to stay hydrated, but man, you have one come apart in the top of your pack and, and you're, toast. you're wet, clear yeah. the bottom. Mm-hmm. Not, not a good one. Not Another fun. reason I like 
um, having a Nalgene on a hydro holster on the, my backpack, and then the SteriPen's always easily accessible. Like, I can get water super fast. Like, if I come across a little seep of water, oops, sorry, hit your computer, coming down, I just take that bottle, fill it yeah. up, take the SteriPen, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is, 90 seconds later. That's true. Like I it is water. handy. Just mm -hmm. roomier, bigger. Rather than have to dig in my backpack, open mm -hmm. it up. I mean, maybe it's raining out, get a bunch of stuff wet, trying to deal with that. These are also better in cold environments because they don't, you can like put them in the bottom of your sleeping bag. You can roll yeah. them up in a jacket. They don't seem to freeze like a bladder does. Yeah, have you ever seen Stephen Drake's tip mm -mm. for Nalgene's? You're hunting in really cold weather. You got to flip that Nalgene upside down so the top doesn't freeze. Ah, gotcha. So that, that way you have actually water to drink because the top will freeze. Mm hmm where you flip it around and then that it'll freeze on the bottom. Good which is tip. Down the top. That is a good tip. Stephen Drake, he would know. Yep. Hunts and all those crazy BC for those yeah. mountain goats. Let's run through just gear in general. So like kill kits, any extra gear that you got, let's just kind of run through those real quick. So trekking poles, do you, you said you carry trekking poles? Yep. Peaks. I have the, the peaks, uh, the new carbon or the, the backcountry elite core candle yep. trekking poles lucky legacy light gotcha i'm i've got the uh, peaks as well the my last one broke finally my black diamond carbon cork which i love those poles but oh i had yeah, those back in the day those are so yeah good. i had a pair forever and one finally broke i can't remember who was using it might have been omar <laughs> i can't remember somebody broke sounds like omar omar you knucklehead young omar i can't remember if it was omar somebody broke it yeah um so yeah same same for me what about knives Give me your, your favorite knives. What are you carrying for knives? So for me, it's just a side knife is that the mini bug out from Benchmade. This is a sick 1. knife. 1.5 ounces, and it is, it's an awesome knife. I absolutely love that thing just as a quick grab knife. Yep, everyday carry. Yeah, everyday mm -hmm. carry, quick grab, just in the pocket. You never know what you're going to need a knife for. But elk cunning, mm -hmm. elk cunning, the outdoor edge three and a half inch kit. Okay. Is the best for elk cutting. Replaceable blade? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just having the three and a half inch blade, it is it is nice for Can I just cutting. comment real quick, just a gripe? I got a pet peeve. Huh. You clean an animal and you're using replaceable blade knives, pack your damn blades out. Oh, yeah, 100%. absolutely. I just well, found a carcass yesterday morning. Yeah. Okay. It was an old carcass. It had been there a while. Gut, you know, yeah. gut pile, full blades. Like, I'll bet there were eight blades in that thing. Yeah, man. Stuck I, in the bottom. I picked yeah. them all up, packed them out, but... Pack your blades out. Yeah, don't be the guys like trying to shove them in the ground. Like yeah, oh. yeah. Don't shove them in the ground. Just pack them out. When yep. you when you open up a new blade, you have the little packet. You take that blade out and you, you stick your old blade in right in there and yeah. you put that back in your kill kit. Yep. It's not that hard. Cool. So that's what you got. Outdoor yeah. edge, three and a half razor, yeah, for elk. razor light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. You, goat knives, ibex mini, mm -hmm. and the carbon tur. Mm -hmm. Tur carbon. You might hate yourself when you kill a big bull. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got both, right? Yeah, you both. got replaceable yeah. blade and a fixed blade. blade. Okay. Is that what you're right. saying? Yep. Yeah, gotcha. I carry both. Okay. I love replaceable blades for everything. I pack a ton of How many blades, blades do you pack? You, how many do you pack? Extra blades of the razor lights? Five. Five? Normally six. I think but it's five. for this, yeah, I'm five. taking like 10 or 12. For moose? But, and yeah, I always like to bring extra too because I figure someone else hunting with me yep. probably has another replaceable yeah. blade type knife that runs the same thing. Gotcha. I'm trying to remember what's in that kit. I think it's five. Gotcha. What are you going to skull cap them suckers with? <laughs> silky one, silky F one eighty. Okay, saw. So you yeah. pack a saw, fold out. Saw. Yep. You? No saw. You're packing but, whole head. Had a baby. I, in hopes of yeah, something mounting. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In hopes. Yeah. I mean, right. at least a euro. You sure. know, like yeah. at least I want the skull. Yeah. I'm going to pull the cape off. Worst, you know, worst mm -hmm. case. You're not going to cut the horn off with a Leatherman. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. That was a terrible experience. It you was put me bad. Through. Yeah, hands but, cramping. And then you got you got far enough through that uh -huh. like we didn't have a choice. We had to. Finish. Yeah, we were we were committed. It was it was like there was enough work done when you yeah that was asked pretty, for a break. That was and pretty I'm like, silly. Okay. And then just going back and forth. That was that was not fun. Yeah, that was silly. Keep in mind though, the only reason <laughs> why I'm carrying the silky saw is for the stove. Oh, cut wood. Cut wood. So it's dual purpose. Because you're bringing out the whole head. Uh, well, it's Brady. Of course he is. You're going to have to well, no, smoke cap no, it. No, 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 I am doing a Euro on a moose. What? Yeah. I Euroed my last moose. You mount everything. I'm not going to pay for a moose mount. Come on. I'm not going to do that. Think about think I'm about doing this. A, I'm doing a full body Marco and a full this. body Ibex. I can't You've afford do any a full more body mount. Uh, think about this. Full <laughs> body mount. <laughs> I mean, moose? I mean, a full shoulder mount moose. <laughs> you have to. Yeah. Full body would be great. Full body right when like you walk in the airport the in Anchorage. Okay, yeah. I'll ask you, Trail. What, what have you done with your moose so far that you shot in Alaska? It sits in my basement, skull capped. 
it's by, by my but ping that's, pong. That's what trail does. It's though. by my ping pong table. It just okay, hangs and you out. brought the hide back, and where's your hide thing? It hangs over a door, also in my room. <laughs> <laughs> he, this, that's his trail, though. That's not like that's what I would have expected. Yeah, from I want Brady that. to but have. Think about this. You bring a date home, okay? The fireplace on. Yep, you I got, got your grizzly bear house. rug laying there. Yeah. I got, got a big black bear rug or whatever yeah. your bear rug. Yeah, you're nice and laid out on that. Oh yeah. You got ibex or uh, oryx cooking on the barbecue, Ooh. and right over the top of you and your lady is just a. 60 plus inch moose. Do you know where my mind goes full for Brady and a moose? Full shoulder mount. Mm -hmm. it, it goes back to like the late 90s Abercrombie. Abercrombie. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. it just sets yeah. them. It's just Brady's got a mood. shoulder mount. He's shirtless. Yes. He's and he's laid out on his jeans. bear rug. You guys are <laughs> painting a pretty good picture. You have you to. You got to do it. This is Brady. You this have is what to. Brady does. I don't know if I'm going to do it, guys. You have to. I've said before, but two antlers, skull cap, 68 pounds what? On, on a moose. On that, on that moose I shot in Alaska. 68 pounds. 68 pounds. The skull, just the skull cap portion and the two antlers. And that's why I don't want to pack that hide. They are big. Whoa. And I packed the hide. I got the hide, but I did skull cap it. Mm. I mean, you add Whoa. another, you add a full skull. I mean, you're, you're over a hundred easy. Yeah. Yeah. They're big. Whoa. I don't know. You're strong I've, now, I've been, I've been looking at, you know, cost of a shoulder mount moose and it is yeah, you only YOLO. Was it three, <laughs> three grand, four grand? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's got to be up there. Like my, my Canadian bull that I shot with my bow looks great. You rode in my reloading room. Just great. Yeah. But you got to set the mood with the bear rug, the fireplace. What about a, a Euro? A Euro Six, doesn't set 65, it? 65, 70 inch bull. Yeah. You've got the room for it. I do have the room. You have to. That's settled. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> that's settled. <laughs> there you go. Congratulations. Uh, I'm the same as you. Goat knives. Same two yeah. knives, actually. I love those knives. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do pack a saw, it's just the outdoor edge grizz saw, just a skull cap. I'll probably make Omar carry a saw, honestly. Yeah, just, just, in, just, just in, in case. case. Yeah, gotcha. And it's nice for cutting shooting lanes if you need to. Like yeah. if you end up setting water or something like that, it's kind of handy. I've Actually, used that a bunch. A really I've also cut, uh, you know, if you need like for your tarp, if you you're using a trek and pull during the day, you want an extra stake. yeah center stay for a tarp or a tent. Yeah. It's great for cutting that. That's what I'm using. So game bags, go hunt pack out game bags. Go hunt, go hunt, pack out game bags. Same. We same, designed them. Same. Yeah, we can, yeah. Elk one, same exactly thing. Exactly what we wanted. Yep. Yep. I agree. I'm a little concerned if I'll fit a moose quarter in there. I don't know if you will. I do have some prototype ones. We had some prototypes that were actually a little bigger than I'm taking yeah. up there. The ones before we took the side and bottom off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah those prototype ones. Yeah. But yeah, moose are big, big. I've used those go hunt game bags a metric shit ton already. This yeah. year, and you've killed a lot of animals year. already. Yeah, so I'm very happy with them. But what are you doing for headlamps? Uh, peaks, peaks, backcountry duo, backcountry duo. Okay, you? I'm carrying two of them. Oh, Black. you are back up, yeah. back up. Black diamond spot 400. Gotcha. I'm not real concerned about headlamp on mm -hmm. on this. Gotcha. Same for me. Peaks, backcountry duo. I, I like, like the headlamp. How bright it is. I like the new one that's charge rechargeable by USB C. Yep. Which is the same thing as my Gar Garmin Inreach Mini. Oh, the new ones are new ones. Mine's are. mini. Yeah, you yeah, have the yeah the old 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 one. No kidding, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, the new ones USB C, which is super baller. Really? Yeah, I didn't know that. That's either. pretty cool. Yeah, I do like the headlamp. I like the red light in it. I use it a lot. Super, super bright. bright. It's durable. Yeah, I agree. And the battery life on it's awesome for a rechargeable headlamp. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not the lightest, but it works pretty good. Well, those things I'll sacrifice. backup headlamp. You carry one? No. No. You have two of those? Two of those. So I have a backup, uh, just a Petzl uh, Bindi, oh. just a little guy. It's not many lumens, maybe 100, I think, but it, I just carry that in my kill kit just in case I get in a pinch. My cell phone is my backup headlamp. Is, <laughs> is, is the Bindi? <laughs> cell phone flashlight. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I, I've, I honestly have used that when I had a headlamp on me, a working headlamp on me, yeah. but it's like in, in your pack and you only have a little bit to go. So it's just, a that's the only light. downside of digiscoping cases for the most part yeah, though. You, you have to pop a digiscoping case off. Case yeah. off. Who gives a shit? Um, is the Bindi a little bit bigger than the old Petzl E-Lite? Oh yeah, it, it is. is. Yeah. I've got one here. I think I'll pull it out and show you while I'm finding it. Why don't you tell me what you're using as far as power goes? Are you packing pack power banks? Packing power. I have solar a solar panel. I have a solar panel. Um, I have two um, pocket juices, just an off brand one I've had forever. 20,000? Uh, I believe the one's 20. The other one might be 10 or 15. It's a smaller one. Mm -hmm. Or the other one, one might be bigger than that. And then the other one's 20. 
can't exactly remember, but I've just used those ones forever. They still work. I'm not going to spend any more money on anything else, but use those two. How long can you get out of that? People always ask what charge time, how many charges can you get out of something like that? I always try to top my stuff off all the time. Like every time I get back to camp, I'm topping off my phone. Well, that is pretty small. Yeah, it's not it's very not small big. as a, yeah, the E-Lite. Yep, pretty handy. It is handy, actually. Um, so like I said, I top my stuff off every night. I always am a big promoter of topping off your headlamp all the mm-hmm. time because you never know that one night you're going to be out there for five hours cutting something, you know, doing a full body mount. <laughs> just, jo- <laughs> just joking. Yeah. You're you got to take a lot of time. I love that. Uh, so <laughs> two to three. I think it's a good easy average on most of these power banks two mm-hmm. or three full charges and then like i said i have the anchor solar panel always with me so i'll leave that back at camp and the nice thing is the anchor i've actually used it where if it's even if it's you know slightly cloudy out or raining or whatever mm-hmm. i can still put that inside my shelter and it'll still uh get enough you know sunlight in a way to charge through the shelter but obviously it'd be better if you put it outside your shelter and i just try to run the cords underneath so you're taking a solar panel and and a couple battery packs yep solar, pa- solar panel and two battery packs yeah okay what about you Taking the Goal Zero Flip 24, okay. two of them, those two of those power banks. Okay. I, uh, you know, I'm not going back for a ton of time. I'm going to be in the backcountry for eight days or so. Mm-hmm. Um, but work, kid, family, pregnant wife, mm-hmm. I do, I do try to stay in contact a lot, and I will run through some battery. Mm-hmm. But each of these, it's one of these power banks is two full charges on a phone, and then two on the in reach as well. And that should be plenty in eight days. Gotcha. I'm like you. I think I'm just using it. It's on O and N. I think is a power bank twenty thousand. I think I can get three charges or so. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I don't use my phone that much. Um, yeah, I you just, got you got grown kids. Yeah, I got I a four year old and a pregnant wife. Yeah. I'm I'm on it. Constantly. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, I don't use mine a ton, so I just mostly keep my phone in airplane mode. And yeah, I don't a lot of the time during the day. I just turn it off. Yeah, yeah. with satellite messenger. Uh, I'm still using the old Delorme. The, the Delorme one. Yeah, the old. <laughs> How the is your still yellow working, Delorme? Man. I don't know. It's slow, but it works. Yeah, you? Slow, it works. <laughs> Garmin and Reach Mini Two. Mini Two. The same Mini Two. Anybody tried the Messenger, the Puck? I no, want, I want one. Uh-uh. That's pretty bad. I like being able to see all my stuff on the device. The other one I like is the new Motorola. Motorola. I want really to try intriguing. that one too. Yeah, we were one. just talking about that earlier today. Yeah, that I haven't tried it, but it's tiny. It mm-hmm. it looks sick. Yeah. yeah, I would love to try one. Jared said it's pretty fast too. <laughs> But yes, satellite messenger. Uh, what else? Gear. What are you using for a gear bag? Uh, this guy right here. That's it. So just one of these, which is our Go Hunt gear bag. It's like the medium gear bag, I think. Right? Yep. Just a sil poly. I have everything in that. That's like my kill kit and my possibles pouch combined. So I've got everything in one. I don't carry any extra bags. Um, you know, no extra clothes or anything like that, and any extra bags. I just carry that one, and that's it. While we were touching on game bags earlier, how many actual game bags are you taking for an elk? Uh, three. So two big ones. Um, okay, if I'm hunting, right, like right now I'm hunting Utah, general season spiker cow, so I'm yep. not packing out, you know, head really, uh, or cape, I should say. So I'm packing two for me, the bigger ones, boned out meat, and yep. then one, the small one for just loose meat, neck okay. meat, tenderloins, back straps, things like that. So that's it, just three. I think a lot of guys usually take too many game bags, which I guess for, is not a bad for thing. Sh- for but sure, yeah. Once you start getting it dialed, you should kind of maybe take some pictures of it and realize, like, hey, you can actually get by with fewer game yeah. bags. Yeah. yeah. Even taking net, neck meat, even taking everything you possibly can. Mm-hmm. like but game Bone in, pretty, maybe take some more. Bone yeah. out, I can fit almost all the meat in two. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, three maybe if I'm packing a cape, potentially. But, yeah, I don't think you need, I don't think you need a full five set of game bags unless yeah. you really are getting after it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, that's it. Uh what else? Food we we all we ought to talk about food here in a minute, but is there any other pieces of gear? I know we we fire fire starters, you know, yeah, matches, lighters, essential. those kinds of things. Yeah, possible's pouch for me is the uncharted core kit. Yep. And then I added a quick clot three by two inch. Yep. And then uh got that bug out mini knife in there. And then uh yeah, that's it for the possible's pouch. Do I dare bring up a heatly debated topic? On yeah. this podcast, bring it up. Mm. Toilet paper or wet wipes? Wet wipes Both. all the way. Dude wipes. Both. No TP, just dude wipes. Ugh. No. Dude wipes. It's got to have dude wipes. A you little menthol the, back there. It's great. Oh, it's great. It's, it's the a best. Fantastic little feeling. It's a real pleasure, Grady. <laughs> what are you going to do? You need to use some toilet paper to light a fire. 
That stuff doesn't burn. That's why you have both. And a lighted fire. That's why I was. I was oh, <laughs> you don't even. Yeah. You don't even use I was a lighter. To decide oh, if yeah. I even need lighters. To yeah. be honest, I, I probably do from a survival standpoint. But I, I can't remember the last time I actually started fire on a hunt. It's been a while. It's been a long time. Dude, why? You like to pamper your ass. I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> I, I guess do. so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight dude wipes. No, no toilet paper. Just, yeah. How much toilet paper are you taking one with ounce. you? One ounce. One ounce. Exactly one ounce. How much does that equate to? Don't know. I wear, I, one ounce is enough to get me by for a full hunt. It always has. Ten days. Ten days. No way. Yep. There's no chance. Hundred percent. That is. It, that's a horrible thought. You gotta to have at least one a ounce. roll. Do you know how much one ounce is? It's, it's gotta be more than a roll. It's actually quite a bit. It, not enough to to shit in the woods for ten days. <laughs> no <laughs> way. You take a full roll. So every week at home, you yourself go through a full roll of toilet paper. You're saying, in in ten days. No. You, I don't. So why I do, don't you, why do I, I need? A, I don't think I so do. So why do I need a full roll in the backcountry for might, ten days? Honestly, <laughs> I'm to think. Uh, I don't know if I. I don't think I do. I rarely buy toilet paper. Brady, now you've got me worried. Uh, I'm, concerned. I'm concerned about this, your this guy. <laughs> my diet is dialed. My backcountry food is dialed. One ounce. One that doesn't ounce. sound like that much toilet it's paper. Quite a bit I'm of thinking of like maybe buy. twenty squares in an ounce. No, it's not yeah. twenty squares. One square per go. Is that what you're thinking? That is what horrible. are you? Oh, Brady. No, you, you one ounce. I would like, I mean, I was going to say I'd like to revisit this when you get I, back, I need but to, I don't know if I do want to revisit I it. need to visually verify how much one ounce is. Me too. All right. That's, that's what I need to do. That's pretty wild. This is what always equates to you. Optics. I've always, I've always had leftover toilet paper. That's crazy. Let's run through optics real quick. Okay. Optics, Temba 42, Leica, Noctavids for me, uh, marsupial gear, enclosed bino harness, uh, Leica Range Master 2400 rangefinder with compensation, uh, tether, long tether, short tether actually on it, um, and then an outdoor vision uh, rangefinder pouch, uh, spotter, Swarovski ATS 65, MagView Digiscope adapter, uh, tripod. I love this thing, by the way. Tricer. The, the little Tricer. Which one do you have? I have the AD, which is the longer version, which I really like. I'm glad I went with that. Um, and then the Tricer head, pan head. I do wish it had a little more bite on the left and right. Uh, up and down's pretty good, but the left and right has not got enough bite, in my opinion, mm. for a spotter. Even, a more a, tension. Even, a, even a 65, I would love more tension on that thing. But I do like it. It does well enough with that spotter. I can get by with it. Yep. Um, that's it, I think, yeah. You're always packing a... Spotter elk hunting? Um, yeah, I think I am. Just because I like to digiscope, you know, I like to size up a bull if I can glass it up. And I mean, I'm not always, but a lot of the time I am. Digiscoping adapter? Yeah, MagView. Mm -hmm. That's the one I've got right now. And then my iPhone 12, the old one, the old one. What about you, Optics Moose? Optics Moose, Zulu 6, 16 okay. by 42s, image stabilization binos. Gotcha. Marsupial enclosed bino pack. I have a Sig Kilo 8K rangefinder. I have the Tricer BC tripod yep. with the Tricer pan head, just mm -hmm. like you do, but small, the smaller tripod. Mm -hmm. I'm toying around the idea of taking out the center column and putting the smaller center column on there because mm -hmm. I really don't need it yep. at all. Um, and then for my spotter setup, I am borrowing Christopher Porter's, luckily, his 65 objective, and I'm putting my ATX on there and not taking the BTX. Mm-hmm. Because I just want, again, just a digiscope. Yep. I'm out there and to be able to judge bulls because I have to, you know, look at brow tines and look at width mm -hmm. out there to really pick apart a bull. I need one of these in my life. Yeah, that thing's sweet. Yeah. Are you taking it with you everywhere? Not on the elk hunt. No elk hunt. So on the elk hunt, I have no spot or no tripod, but I have the small marsupial harness mm -hmm. um, with the Zulu 6 10 by 42s in it. Yeah. Hunting in the burns, image stabilization is, I cannot wait to use that in that in that burn uh, mm -hmm. image stabilization, just mm -hmm. picking animals apart. I do shake like a leaf, so that'll be nice. Um, Loophole RX Full Draw 5 rangefinder, yep. angle, angle compensation, all that. And then I have a, the marsupial gear rangefinder pouch, small, mm -hmm. and then the small tether. And then I also have a marsupial zippered pouch, small, and I, that's where I keep my uh, smoke wind, wind indicator. And Mar then I'll actually, your marbles. Yeah, my marbles. <laughs> exactly. And then I'll actually throw some. That's a lot of the times where I throw my uh, elk reeds is in there as well. Oh, I got you. Do you remember the tip from the last time we talked? 
their headlamp in there too. Oh yeah, we did talk about that last time. Yeah, it was a good one. It's a great place to. But that would be harder to get my your reeds out. My elk reeds out. Yeah, that's true. That's the problem. This yeah. thing would be sick for elk hunting. But then on the sheep hunt, I'm bringing that with the smaller tricer. I'm bringing that Swarovski ATC with the smaller tricer. Every time I look at one of these, I fall in love. You a little deeper. Yeah, I got that's why I got it. Yeah, I felt too much in love. I mean, that thing is so compact. I got to test that out last year when my mule deer hunts. Let me borrow one. I had to send it back, but it was a yeah. treat. My Swaro 65, even that this last weekend, I was a lot of times I was thinking this thing is just it's not so much it's it's just bulk. It, it I mean it's smaller than an 80, you know, yeah, or the but bigger ones, but it's still bulky. bulky. Yeah. It still takes up a lot of room in a backpack. Mm -hmm. This thing is so compact. It's like the size of a 16 ounce water bottle if you had the straight. Yeah. Yeah, I love I love this thing. I need one bad. I think it's pretty badass. It is. It's bright. And it's really nice too because like it's actually really crystal clear at max power, which most spotting scopes you, know, you always got to back them down yeah, a little you, bit. Yeah, yeah you but lose it's edge to end. edge is still really great. Is it's it a fifty six objective or uh, bigger? I think it's fifty six. Fifty six. They make this in a straight. Yep. That would be so nice in oh, your I backpack. Hate straight. The I only, too, the the only be... downside to the, that mini one is most angled tubes. You can you know loosen the side and, and twist the tube left or right. You yeah. Can't, you can't do that on that one. I hardly ever do that on mine anyway. Oh, I do that all the time. Really? Uh, oh, I never do. Yeah. It's just so nice, like the neck angle that just, yeah, you know, comfort. I was just thinking the size of it, it's so compact that if it was straight, it would fit really nice in a backpack. And yeah. then you can almost fit it in a pants pocket, to be honest, if you're like really running and gunning really quickly. Sure. I just, I really like that. That might be like my next save up. The thing's get, awesome. Get one of those. Yeah. Cool. How many uh, rangefinder batteries you guys pack in? Just one extra. One I'm extra. just I'm just replacing my the first of every year, and I'm not packing any extra. Yeah. Really? Yep. I just replace it every year in August, and then that's it. I mean, I don't worry about it. You? I pack two. Real two extra? Yeah. Damn. Just to be just to be careful. <laughs> hey. You never know. Navy SEALs one is none, and two is one. <laughs> Yeah, I just replaced They're so them. small and so lightweight, and it's, I cut weight in other places, too. So gotcha. it's like one of those things where it's like, whatever. I, I rely on my rangefinder. It's mm -hmm. Some people will make fun of me for it, but it's like I need my rangefinder to make a perfect one-shot one kill. One kill I, got, I, I feel like I got to have one extra on me just in case. You never know in temperatures or yeah. whatever, like drains your battery, or maybe you were traveling, like flying to Alaska, mm -hmm. and my little button was compressed the whole time. Like, who knows? Yeah. No, I'm not doing it. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't talk him into it. I, I'm just replacing it one time at the first of the year. It's right. good to go. Uh, anything else that you can think of as far as gear lists go? I mean, we, we probably, we've been going a long time, but do you want to talk about food real quick? Just, I know that we always, when we do gear lists, we do podcasts on gear lists. I know people always think we get, and we did a food one, one, mm -hmm. uh, one other time, but do you yeah. want to, I'm curious as to you, because you said you're, you are going stoveless. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would like to know what you are going to eat in a day. Okay. It's a little it's a little deep though because of the reasoning behind it. Um, so I, I have eaten macros for a really long time, right? You guys have known mm -hmm. that about me. I eat the same food same time every day. I switch it up a little bit just to so my body doesn't get too used to a certain food, but I always keep the macros the same. What I'm coming off of, like right now in the office on an everyday thing, is 2,800 calories. Mm -hmm. And then 50% of those calories are coming from protein. So it's 350 grams of protein. That's an ounce and a half per pound of body. Or sorry, one. Wait, how many grams of pro protein? 350. In, in a day? In a day. How? It's very easy. It's So for me, that's 350 one. That's 1. grams. 5, that's 1.5 grams of protein for every one pound of body weight. That's a lot. I mean, recommended, Sounds like a lot. recommended as one pound per pound of body, one gram per pound of yeah. body weight. That's recommended. I do 1.5 to get a little extra. I like sure. high protein diet. Um, does really well for my body keeping weight down, mm -hmm. which I can gain weight very easily if I wanted to. Um, and that's why I keep my carbs at 30%, which is 210 grams mm -hmm. of carbs and my fat 20%, which is 62 grams. So that's what I, that's what I eat on a daily basis right now. That's what my body's used to. Now protein is it is hard on your digestive system or harder. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, thermogenic response to your, your body actually heats up quite a bit and burns a lot of energy trying to burn that protein. It's a lot harder to break down than the other food categories. Um, so I brought that down to one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Right now I'm right around 230. So I'm 6'1", 230. That's, so that's what I'm at. And that's what all my macros are built off of. Um, so I'm bringing that down to 238 grams of protein 
on 3,895 calories. Almost 4,000 calories? Almost 4,000 calories. So I, I've restructured my Do macros. Do you think you'll gain weight or lose weight still? I'll lose weight for sure. Okay. Like no question, lose weight. Gotcha. Um, and so I've, I've restructured my macros to, to almost flip. I was doing 50% protein. I'm going to do 25% protein um, based on the amount of calories. And then I'm going to do 38% carbs, that energy level, keep that like quick energy level high. Mm-hmm. So it's 374 grams. And then I'm doing 40% fat. The fat is really nice on your digestive mm-hmm. digestive system, really good on cognitive function, really good on recovery. Fats are, are essential, so I bump those up to 177 grams. So 40% of my calories are coming from fats. Fat. Um, and so I've kind of restructured restructured just knowing what my body likes. I can't, I'm not going to cut my protein any less than one gram per pound of body weight. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just muscle function and muscle recovery, I want to I keep it at that. Um, so that's what I change it into is... is you know, those breakdowns off of 3,895 calories. So, so what are you actually eating? So I'm waking up and I'm going to eat a green belly spiced caramel apple um, bars. Delicious. The, full, Delicious. the full pack. The full bag. The full bag. 665 calories. Delicious. 18 grams of protein, 90 grams of carbs, and 29 grams of fat. Okay. That's like a perfect start for me. Mm-hmm. It's carb, high carb, uh, muscle glycogen, be restored. Um if, if I was depleted, which I highly doubt it based on what my dinner is going to be, but just in case, restore all that muscle glycogen, um, nice fat content, protein, just to get ready for the morning. And then a snack, um, Fit Crunch peanut butter jelly flavor, mm-hmm. and then carnivore snacks. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of carnivore snacks, but it's essentially like really prime cut of meats, mm-hmm. just just uh, dehydrated in sodium. So it's not like, it's not, it's not uh, like straight beef jerky. Um, I don't know how else to explain it. I wish I crunchy. No, no, not real, cr- not real crunchy. Um, like consistency of beef jerky. Better, better. Yeah, like more normal, mm. more normal texture. Um, mm. And what what I really like about that is the sodium content in it. Like I said, I was telling you guys before in an earlier podcast, twelve hundred milligrams of sodium for every one hour of of sweating active work. So I can get a lot of sodium in from. From this, which is what I really like, is the sodium content in it. But a half a bag of carnivore snacks of the chicken, so a half bag of chicken is 325 calories. Where do you buy those? Uh, online only. Okay. They're direct to consumer only carnivore gotcha. snacks. Really good. Highly suggest. Um, so it's 325 calories, 57.5 grams of protein. So that's kind of my big shot of protein for the day. Zero carb, and um, 7.5 grams of fat. But my, my Fit Crunch bar has 27 grams of carbs. So in that meal, I'm going to have 87 grams of protein, 27 grams of carbs, and 23.5 grams of fat. So that's a nice little, you know, midday snack. And then lunch, sorry if this is really long. You guys tell me to shut the hell up. but This is good stuff. You told me you were interested. I am. So this, is yeah. the, this is the gold. So I'm breaking this down for you. This is the... So lunch, mm-hmm. so Mission Tortillas, they make a carb balance. And I'm already pretty heavy on carbs. So to fit my macros, to fit that carb range that I wanted, Mm -hmm. I actually went with a little more carb balanced option as a tortilla and didn't just go for the full flour, like heavy carb, right? Because I don't want my body bogged down. Carbs will kind of give you that like midday sleep kind of bogged down if you Mm -hmm. eat too much of it. But you also want to keep the muscle glycogen stored up as I'm, you know, I'm planning on being super active, chasing elk all day. So I do want to keep replenishing just at a healthy rate. Um, so I'm eating two of those, which is only 38 grams of carbs and two tortillas. Mm-hmm. Um, just eating them straight, just eating them straight. Well, with Justin's maple peanut butter, mm-hmm. um, which I love, I love the maple. And then also there's a company called wicked cuts, bacon jerky. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's bacon consistency. So it's essentially a peanut butter, honey, bacon sandwich, yep. which I love. And that's kind of my, I, you know. You got to eat foods in the backcountry that you look forward to eating Mm -hmm. because so you can actually eat them, right? So you don't get behind on calories and any of that stuff. Um, Then Cheese Wisps Aged Cheddar, you showed me those. Yeah, delicious. And they fit macros perfectly for me. Um, And then for dessert, a Bobo's Coconut Bar, which are so good. Those things, like, I know I'm going to crush lunch every single day, no matter what, no matter how much I don't want to eat. To that point, I I probably threw away 20 Lara bars over the weekend just because I was like, I'm like, I don't eat them. I don't like them. 
and you got it. You I buy come them. back to liking them again. I buy them and don't like them. Oh, I think I, they're disgusting. I leave them at the bottom of my food bag and I don't end up eating them and then they expire and I yeah. throw them away. And I'm a huge proponent of taking foods you look forward yeah. to eating so you actually eat them, right? You don't fall behind the curve because once you fall behind the curve, it just magnifies each day that you continue to fall behind. Mm-hmm. So that meal, that lunch meal is 960 calories. 37 grams of protein, 112 grams of carbs, and 54 grams of fat. It's another very well, you know, hopefully that's a hard push chasing alcohol morning, and this is mm-hmm. more of a recovery meal. Muscle Have you glycogen. tried this for a day just to see what it's like? What I'm going think? to on Thursday. Okay, good deal. But I know how my body functions on macros, sure. and I know what my body likes, so I know I'm going to feel good. You're within it. But I, I want to know on Thursday I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I want to know that I actually like eating it. Yeah. in this order i yeah. might switch it up or something but the order i'm saying um and then snack afternoon snack fit crunch milk and cookies flavor oh, love love that fantastic bar okay. and then a and then a bag of fritos love that and why too. i love fritos is there ain't shit in fritos other than corn and salt yeah that's all it is and it's like as, as far as chips go mm-hmm. and that's another sodium content for me another source of sodium content for me um I mean, that's as healthy as it gets as far as a chip goes, just corn, salt. Um, so that is 550 calories, 32 grams of protein, 45 grams of carbs, and 28 grams of fat. Just a quick little 500-calorie snack. And then dinner is a green belly bar, mango, cashew, coconut. I love mangoes, I love cashews, and I love coconuts. Mm-hmm. So that's a good dinner for me. And then carnivore snacks, uh, half a bison bag, which is 350 calories again. But that meal right there. So I'm really... Nighttime is a big meal for me. Sleep cycle for one, mm-hmm. and then recovery for two, and then muscle glycogen restoring three. Like those are my. Uh, that's what I'm chasing at that night meal. Mm-hmm. So my night meal is a thousand fifteen calories. It's my highest calorie dense meal. Um, that should help with sleep cycle. That should help with recovery. That should help with just restorative muscle, everything like that. Sixty three point five grams of protein. Um, that's that muscle. Uh, restoring 100 grams of carbs that's that glycogen restoring then 42.5 grams of fat and that's just overall health for sleep cycle cognitive function the next morning Mm -hmm. recovery um any drink mixes any supplements so i I will supplement as well um but supplements and food are very different Mm -hmm. so supplementation is good but it is not as good as a whole food and Mm -hmm. it never will be Taking a supplement, everyone should do it for sure, but it is not as good as eating a food itself that supplies that that nutrient to begin with. Um, But I'll take two Apex Conquers Mm -hmm. for energy and focus and, you know, getting into the moment, whatever it is, that's just kind of a little shot in the arm. Then I'll take two Apex Quench, um, which are a little, honestly, a little light in, in sodium content, but I don't mind it because I'm... I've yeah, found a lot of sodium children. content mm-hmm. through food, which is better. It's more bioavailable through a whole food than it is just through, drink you know, a, a pill or a supplement or a drink mix, anything mm-hmm. like that. Um, so I'm not worried about it. It actually fits my sodium content for the day very well. And then uh, two recoveries, which has the reco- the Apex recoveries. Um, they have Vita Cherry in it. It's like um, you guys maybe heard of Tart Cherry, mm-hmm. anything like that. Vita Cherry. It's what a lot of athletes take. And it helps really well with um, flushing lactic acid. So if I am going to be sore the next morning, um, you know, maybe it was a hard day, a lot of vertical, maybe we packed out a bowl, whatever it was. Um, Anything that will create a ton of lactic acid, that muscle lactic acid, that'll help flush all of it. So I'll drink two of those a night just to stay ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, yeah, the sodium content is more coming through food than it is through supplement. Wow. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think it's amazing. It's, I, it's, I, it's pretty incredible that you're you're down to that detail. I had some time. I was sure. laid up for <laughs> right. I was laid up for a while. So you I I really it. I don't want to waste the time. So I'm like, you know what? I've always wanted to dial in backcountry mm-hmm. macros. Yeah. And I've never done it. Right. I've always just kind of dealt with it and then ended up being stuck behind a tree because I don't want to deal with it and just took shit that yeah. sounded good. I'd be know? interested on the backside to see how it went. You know yeah. how, you, how you felt about it, the whole experience, just both in how you felt, how you performed, and then yeah. just. I, I can eat I can eat the same bland food every day and yeah. it does not bother me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now on a Sunday, do I like going to get pancakes and peanut butter with my son and mm-hmm. have a little Sunday? Of course. Like who doesn't like doing that? Maybe Brady. But Brady. when you have a kid, you'll understand. It's like it's fun to break up the mm-hmm. monotony of yeah. you know a week and being strict and the whole yeah. thing. But like I can tell you right now on like hundred percent face value, I will not have an issue eating this. 
and I know I'll feel good. Gotcha. I might switch up some of it other than the dinner, just keeping my highest contents at dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I like well, it. Can I request one thing? Yeah. I think it'd be really sweet because I'm sure a lot of people like myself would just love to look at this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Could we lay out all your food when you guys do your gear list video, lay out all your food, take a picture of it, clean up your little uh, Excel sheet here with all your macro breakdown and share the picture of your food, share a picture macro of breakdown? the macro breakdown as the second photo on the carousel and maybe post that to go on Instagram. Yeah, that's easy. I think it'd be really cool for people to see it and then. I you know, have, really some, easy. have some comments on it and people can give you thoughts. And yeah. I mm. always kind of like, I was, I would do backcountry macros before, but I just kind of wing it more so. Mm-hmm. Like I would just kind of quick math it mm-hmm. and I didn't really put it all together in meals and like how I want the meals to fall with the calorie contents, all that. And I finally took the, the downtime to do it. Yeah, gotcha. so. And we talked about it before, but you can also enter in all that stuff in my fitness pal. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier. makes a lot. Yeah. As you can see it really easily and manipulate it quickly. Yeah. Anything you want to say different on food? I'm not going to get into mine because mine's... I mean, he nailed, he, mine, yeah, really he nailed it. I mean, what did he say? nailed a lot of good stuff. Mine, mine's always the same. <laughs> Don't let me take all the No, I think you're time. spot on. I think it's awesome. Mm-hmm. I mean, my, mine's basic. I've, I've done the same shit year in, year out. I mean, it's a, mm-hmm. a peak refuel, mountain house for dinner, um, you know, lunch, salami, cheese, yep. tortilla. You have no clue, calorie count, anything? Not, I mean... I don't know, 3,000, somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. I, I have no idea. Proteins, fats, none of that. I, I could yeah. have, I could probably tell you total calories, kind of where I'm at. You know, almonds, uh, Fritos, Snickers bar, that's it, fruit bar, uh, pro bars, you know, energy yeah. chews. It's it's your basic backcountry meal. You it's know? Basic white chick. Basic, yeah, <laughs> basic, basic, yep. Do you, know what, do you know what your weight is per day? Yeah. Two pounds, right at two it's pounds. Oh, you said two pounds. Okay. Yeah, right at two that. pounds. Two pounds per day. Yeah. And that's really what I was, I was trying to get to 4,000 at two pounds and I got to 38.95 at right at two pounds. Yep. Solid on list. the macros I wanted. That's the other kind of game I was having to play in though. I was like, I mean, I definitely could add a lighter food with different nutrient contents, different macro contents mm-hmm. that would get me there, but mm-hmm. I'd rather have the right contents and be a hundred, you know, 105 calories short. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I don't think we'll get into our weapons because those get, we get down rabbit holes. But yeah, that'll be yeah. a big rabbit hole. Yeah, big rabbit hole. But, I mean, we're shooting a weapon. <laughs> yep. Matthews bows, Browning rifles. Yep. Um, you know, pretty – you can look those up. I'm sure we've done video. I've done videos on it. Yeah. I know everybody has. But anything else you guys want to say about gear, equipment? I feel that was a good breakdown. It's extensive. That was a long one, obviously. That you was guys, a long one. Sorry about all the numbers. No, I think no, it was Numbers awesome. are good. I think it was fantastic. One I think thing. it was really good. Yeah. Talk about that little thing right next to your computer. Oh, cow. The thing we get the most <laughs> questions on every time we do a hunt film. Yeah. Okay. This is a, and I'll give you the logic in it, right? Yeah. So this little contraption you see is a total peep hip quiver. This, it's a little, it almost looks like it's 3D printed. I don't know if it is or isn't, but it essentially feels like it looks like it. So just, you feed your belt through it. It has a tight spot receiver, dovetail receiver. I just have it bolted to it. When you buy this thing, it'll actually come with a knob that you can rotate the angles of it, and you can just bolt this directly to that, which will allow you to rotate it. I just didn't want mine to rotate it. I got it in an angle I liked, and I just bolted it directly to it. Uh, Your quiver has the receiver, so tight spot five arrow quiver slips over the top of it, so you can just dovetail that on and off, take it on and off. Um, rationale behind it. I don't like a quiver mounted my bow. I just don't like the way it shoots. It's heavy. I don't like the, uh, wind blowing through all my Mm -hmm. veins and just kind of blowing my bow around. So for me, this is the best, best case scenario. So I just carry that on my belt. Again, that's a total peep hip quiver with a tight spot, five arrow quiver attachment. Yeah. And you could also double that up and put the dovetails, another dovetail, purchase two of them yep. and put one dovetail on your bow and then swap back and forth throughout Go the hunt if you forth. wanted to. Yep. I've had people ask me any downfalls to this situation. Uh, I feel like it's as quick to load narrow because it's right next to your hip. No big deal. The only downfalls I can see are if you don't get that between the right D loops, um, you know, it can like dig into your hip if you're wearing your pack over the top of it. So you just kind of have to be careful and make it sure it's situated so it's comfortable on your hip belt. The only other issue I've had, and I've got, I could show you right now, I got my quiver right over there, is if you forget to take your quiver off and you sit down into a hillside, so you're on the slant, you sit down into the hill, you're going to put your knocks into the dirt. Mm. So I've got one arrow with one knock that's bent. So you got to be aware of that. You got to take your quiver off before yeah. you sit down into a hill. But other than that, everything about it, I really like. Yeah. 
And that's, I mean, we've had more questions about that than anything else. I think anything we, else, yeah. yeah, we launched a, a hunt film. Everybody was like, cool film, but what's that hip quiver thing you're wearing? I even asked you that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah total peep hip quiver. Yeah. When uh, Neville and I went on an archer antelope hunt, what was it? Two, three years ago, we mm-hmm. were rocking those. And I'll even say too, like sitting in a truck when you're running and gunning all the time, mm-hmm. like having that on, like you really don't notice it's there. Yeah. I might have to grab it and move it when I'm sitting in the pickup, but yep. I can easily have it on the whole time. Yep. I almost forgot. Good thing you asked. So people would know. So you can. You can stop DMing. You can stop. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. You can ask, but yeah, total peep hip quiver. Yep. Anything else? Are we good. That was a long one, but that was good. I felt like it's a good kickoff. How long yeah. was that one? We killed that it. Was a long one. Yeah. That was a lot of good intel. And I think it's a perfect time, too, because mm-hmm. we're all looking at our gear. Like I said, we even thought of some things on here that you know we could maybe mm-hmm. add. Change, or, add. You know, fine tune. You got to have a gear list. Got to. Yeah, I saw somewhere today John Barclay put out a gear list for an archery elk hunt, and somebody else had reposted it and said, there's gear list and there's John Barclay gear list. I kind of feel like this podcast tucked into that same vein. Yeah. It, was, it was good. It was extensive. Yep. Uh, we even could have gone deeper, but I felt like we hit the high points for everything, and hopefully mm-hmm. everybody learned something. I know I did. Yeah, keep so. a gear list for every hunt. Yep. That way you can learn what you use, what you didn't use, and fine-tune it over the course of the years, different seasons, yeah. different weather. That's Write it. everything down. Don't forget anything. And go kill stuff. It's the yeah. best part. That'll be it. Yeah. All, the, all this what we're go, all trying to do. All, all this to go kill stuff. So go do it. Thanks. All right. See you guys later. Appreciate it.